Andy, man. The Wendy Williams Experience. And now we're pleased to bring you our feature presentation. experience and we're good to go yeah hey we've got company coming in today samora the comedian is coming through love her always funny you know her she's like a girlfriend's girlfriend comedian and also do you remember our psychic median friend tana hoy who came in uh he was here maybe five months ago well you know what I'm going to get you hooked up with Tana Hoy today, and he's going to let you know a little bit about um, what you could expect in your future. He'll be here during advice hour. Um, we're going to talk about the celebrities. I want to know from Tana's perspective about Brad, Jennifer, and Angelina. I want to know about Jay-Z and Beyonce's future. I need to know more about Bobby Christina and what the future holds for her, as well as her mama and Janet Jackson and Jermaine Dupri. I need to ask Tana for real. Who it's really good. Plus, we'll talk about the celebrities, Venus and Serena and Lisa Ray. I gotta analyze this whole Lisa Ray thing. Not, I'm not talking about the blind item. I'm talking about the relationship. Uh, we'll talk about Vivica Fox because she's still talking about 50 and she's oh, sort wow. of embarrassing now to women of a certain age. It, 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 just show, show, <laughs> Vivica. Put that queer back there. And we'll talk about Missy Elliott, okay? Um, as well as many others. Because that's what we do here. We talk about people. We do advice. We, we, we make each other laugh and make each other cry. It is what it is. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you... The queen of all media, Wendy Williams. Putting it down. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm glad to be here. Um, and a great day it is. I love when some more comes through. It's just light, easy, breezy talk. You know, she's promoting, um, you know, stuff that she's got going on. But always with some more, we always talk about Hollywood and stuff like that. And she, she always has a nice funny spin on things, so there are a few things I want to talk to her about. And then um, Tano Hoy, you know him. He's been here on the show before. He has amazing predictions on people, and I do want to ask him about some of our favorite celebrities. Tana's coming during Advice Hour, and then I'm going to take your telephone calls. And um, and and he wants to, because he requested, he said, can I talk to some of the listeners, you know, when I come, you know, and so I said, of course, yes, yes, yes. But, you know, you guys have to remember, like, when you're on the telephone, um, if you can keep it to, like, you know, a minute at the, at the most, the, in the most dramatic situ situation, like a minute and a half. Because that way, you know, you leave time for other people to get through and so on and so forth, you know. Um, do you know that George Foreman is about to do another company? First of all, who watches um, Filthy Rich Cattle Drive? 
How out of place does young George Foreman look on that show? I mean, just like crazy out of place. And I can't figure out, I'll be honest with you, I can't figure out whether it's the black thing or the geek factor. Like, or he's not Hollywood. You know what I mean? He might have as much money as those people by virtue of his daddy. But there's just something very country boy and not, you know, like he's not there with his cowboy hat and his, uh, you know, his $300 boy jeans from Fred Siegel. You know, he might not even know what Fred Siegel is. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, those, George Foreman and that whole crew, they just seem like country people with money. You know what I mean? Which is very endearing. Is, I'm surprised that he's on that show. But but I can dig it. I can dig it. Seems like a fine young man. That's the best way I can put it. He seems like a fine young man. I know that seems corny, but he seems corny. And and I mean, that. Yeah. I, that's okay. That, exactly. That's okay. But he seems like a fine young man. I hate that show, though. Kid Filthy Rich Cattle Drive. I mean, I don't really watch it. I zhuzh past. Do you know what that is? That's when what you're watching is in commercials, and then you go and you zhuzh to it, and then make sure you go back to what you were watching. I was out last night at the comedy club. Where's Art? Art! I need to speak with you. Yesterday was Art's birthday, you know. By the way, shout out to everybody who was at the Laugh Factory last night. It ended up being two rooms of comedy, jam-packed, standing room only. People had to get turned away at the door. Uh, next week, we're having three rooms of comedy. Shaylin, you were there. You yes, saw it. I was there. Um, I was booted out of my seat because I was an intern, so... Oh. Yeah, I had to stand. We're going to have three rooms of comedy, oh, though. Okay. Um, but it was okay. It was okay. Yeah, we had a really nice time. Um, Art, people were asking where you are. Now, everybody understood that yesterday was your birthday, and everybody understood that you were drinking Hennessy every 30 minutes, a big belt all through the show, and right. you've polished off a whole bottle, mm -hmm. and everybody understands that you... the walk from the radio station to the Times Square Comedy Club, you bring your friend um, Chief. There you go. And, and so, I, my, my only assumption, and just go with me or lie to me, don't tell me you just disappointed me off, you know, purposely, is that you either fell asleep wait, no, you weren't here to fall asleep. You exited the show immediately. What did you get sidetracked? Because you, you had a little drink. Right. And a swagger in your step. And I saw as you left the studio in the last break of the yeah. show. Yeah, but, you, but you know I had company in town. And I just wanted to spend some time with them before they left today. Your mother and your daughter. Right, right. And she goes to bed early. And by the time, I know what you said about the do your thing and then leave. But she would have been asleep by then. I want to give her a little bit of quality time before they left today to pick up my brother. Oh, yeah. So, so you and Henny and Dro. Right. Went to see your mother and your and your daughter, and you call that quality time? He will. It was for me. <laughs> <laughs> you had him laughing. Oh, shout out to your son's birthday today. Yes. Yes, Aww. my man. Little Kevin celebrating his birthday. My today. young boy. My young boy. You know what we? You know what we gave him today? We gave him. Um, Drum the, bomb, y'all. No, uh, the thing. No, 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 the thing. I mean, you okay. know. Okay. It Okay. No, well, the thing is, is that um, the thing is quite special, by the way. The, yeah, the thing. No, you know the feet. And the fists, right? And the um, the chest plate, the thing from Fantastic Four. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because that's something that he could actually bring to school. Yeah. Like we we got up, you know, we had a nice family breakfast, and and then um, I left money for his teacher to order his pizza for all the kids and stuff yeah. like that. Originally, yeah. I was going to join in and you know go back, you know, me and my husband have lunch in the classroom and stuff like that. But I'm like, why are we dragging his birthday over a, a million days? Like we gave him a gift when he got back from Martha's Vineyard the other day. We gave him an arcade game. We gave him um, the Miss Pac-Man Galaga. Yes. And he absolutely spazzing out. Just I don't have to worry about him crawling in the bed with us anymore <laughs> in the morning. First thing in the morning, I, do -do 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 I hear that going. And I'm like, oh, it's all good. Without no quarters. No, and you want to know what? And no, we rigged it to take money for when company comes over. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know me. I'm always hustling. I'll hustle you even in my own house. And company comes over immediately. It takes money. But here's the thing. That, you know... The con the level of concentration and the the movement and, and so on and so forth. TV has been like pff, cut more than in half in the house. No more Nickelodeon. He's on that Galaga, wow. and he's on that Miss Pac Man. Crazy, crazy. Um, but today we gave him the thing, and then um, on Saturday he's having a little play date at the house, just with some of the boys yeah. from his class. Boys, like everybody that we know has girls, and they're all his age and everything like that. But I'm like. I want to play with boys. And then the boys that we know in our personal lives, they're all like uh, 8, yeah. 10, 12. You know, I, like, I wanted to play with boys that are his own age. Yeah. So I strictly, it's, I can't even call it a birthday party because it's not a birthday party, although, you know, a gift is required. But it's, it's just like seven boys from his class. Mm -hmm. 
you know, who were invited over. And I think two of them are going to be away with their families. So it's like five boys. It might even be four or three. Hell, you know, it's okay if only two show up because then it'll be two of them and then and then my son and yeah. then their two mothers. And just for a couple of hours in the middle of Saturday afternoon, you know what I called it on the invitation? Play and cake. There you go. Not, not food, not pizza and burger. Play and cake. Yeah. Play and cake. And I'm going to get cupcakes. Mm. Hopefully Gallagher and Pac-Man will last longer than Wilson. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. 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 Yeah, and you want to know what? This is a family pick hit. There you go. I mean, I've been known to, you know, while the microwave's going, to just, you know, dip over and see if I can beat a score. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got the WEN up there on the, you know, oh, yeah, Ooh. it's on the scoreboard. Okay. <laughs> I don't know Gallagher, though. You know, back in the day, I was Miss Pac-Man and Centipede. Ooh, yeah. And when we were picking out the games and stuff, I said, God, you know, Donkey Kong was in my top five. Maybe he does Donkey Kong. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, I'll work a few more hustles, and then maybe we'll get Donkey Kong maybe next year. That's hot. Yeah. Or for Christmas. Well, that's soon. Yeah. You know. Although it depends on how much money we make off the machine. Because I see, <laughs> I, I really do see a little hustle going on. <laughs> That's my eye job money in that machine. You, you, don't, you don't know it, but... It's like a piggy bank in itself. Yeah, I figure in like eight years, I'll, I will go and to Dr. Mamaniscus, my Philadelphia plastic surgeon. And um, I think that I'm going to get him to do my eyes. And so, you know, you know, I keep late nights. I'm a woman of a certain age. By then, I'll be of a certain age and eight years older. Yeah. Maybe ten years from now. I don't know. But I figure if that machine can fill up. <laughs> you, you, do you understand what yes, I'm saying? Yes. If that machine can fill up, and it's not a quarter to play, it's 50 cents. Oh, what? Oh, oh, oh. An eye job is expensive. <laughs> okay? Can mother live? <laughs> anyway. Um, but, yeah, so it's his birthday. So that's it. What, and so did you um, have sex last night? Ooh. No, it was, it was strictly family. Wow. Strictly that, family. That was nice. I, I watched Disney with the little one, and, and we just uh, falling asleep in each other's arms. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll do sex tonight from the bowling party. Okay. It's from Soul Bowl. I'll with with a random person or a, a specific? Well, I told you about the gift I got. Yeah, somebody sent Art a birthday gift, and listen what the birthday gift was. It was um, a bunch of condoms. Female and condoms. Female condoms and male condoms and the morning after pills. A whole a jar, jar of, of morning after pills. Yes. Yeah. From a, one of the girls who you know from the Soul Bowl. Yes. Yes. Art hosts this thing for everybody out of town every Thursday night in uh, Union, New Jersey. Yes. The Soul Bowl. It's a bowling alley, but on it's Black Night on on um, it's Artie Night on um, yeah, the DJ. and there's a DJ there. A they really they nickify it yeah, 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 on yeah, yeah, yeah. on on Thursday nights. Right. So a bar and and a DJ and they got the Negroidian buffet. Yes. And art and a microphone. He's hollering. Right. Just go to the Wendy Williams website to learn more about it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wendy Williams, the Wendy Williams Experience.com. So very nice. So that's why I figured you missed. But we had a nice time with, without you anyway last night. And um, all right. Look, more to go of the show. We're just really getting things started. Oh, Goose is on the buttons today. All right. Don't, don't walk too far because sometimes Goose misses a poignant <laughs> moment. You know, like if something dramatic happens. Yeah, then I need that goose. I need that in my life. You know what I mean? How you doing? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, goose is getting it together. Okay, everybody. Um, we're going to take a break. The phones are continuously um, ringing, and I'm going to get them as fast as possible. The fax machine's all full of paper, and it's all good. It's the Wendy Williams experience. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Goose. Hey. No. Oh. No. Hey. 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 <laughs> I am looking for a type of job in which I can teach females how to give good professionals. I'm I'm very interested in that. I'm very good at it. The Wendy Williams Experience. This weekend, Queens of Comedy star some more is at Rascals Comedy Club and Lounge in the Palisades Mall in West Nyack, New York. Call 845-727-4242 or visit rascals.net. And now we know why Samora's coming in. She's going to be promoting her Rascals appearance, as well as a smattering of other things. Look out for Samora visiting the show in the Hour of Truth, which begins at 4 o'clock. 
And everybody, it's the Wendy Williams Experience now on 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul. And our radio station is busy blazing our way through the 107 days of summer. You know, it's Pepsi Thursday here at WBLS. Every Thursday, we got extra special stuff for you. Oh, I see. And some more is also going to be with Steve Harvey at the NJ Pack. On Saturday, September 10th. And I've got some tickets for you right now. So call it number 10 right now on the phones at 866-GET-WENDY. Is going to score those passes for Steve Harvey and the fabulous S'more. That would be the king of comedy and the queen of comedy. They'll be together on one stage, one show. And it's all for you, Jersey. And surrounding areas who'd like to go. 866-GET-WENDY. Saturday, September 10th. Listen, don't wait to win. Call up the pack. Get your tickets now, you know? Keeping it in New Jersey, a shout out to East Orange, you know, tomorrow, Friday at five o'clock, you can join the WBLS street team at Victory Liquor Store at 457 Central Avenue. And you can meet the Budweiser models and receive some prizes and whatnot, courtesy of Budweiser and of course your radio station. Now the, the prizes are only there while supplies last. So remember the time if you want something. We'll be there at five o'clock, okay? Five o'clock tomorrow at Victory Liquor Store at four five seven Central Avenue, okay? All right, you're good to go with that. Now let me talk to you about LA weight loss. <clears throat> LA weight loss, it's a beautiful thing. And it's amazing the amount of control I just had to exert as um, we just had a, a staff meeting with the entire radio station. <clears throat> the staff meeting was over about 1.15. And then the food was brought in from Ruth Chris. Excuse me, not, not Ruth Chris, Amy Ruth's. And they had the fried chicken and the peach cobbler and the red velvet cake. You know, the whole bit. The macaroni and cheese, collard greens and all like that. And guess what I had? I had a big plate of collard greens and some hot sauce. I skipped over everything else. It wasn't difficult to do. And in my bag right here, I have a, a, a yogurt. You know, the, the soft serve, like, um, ice cream type yogurt. But I know the calorie content because I, um, I have the menu from the place. 80 calories. Yeah, so, you know, um, the thing about L.A. weight loss is it's, it, it's, a, it's a life... It's a lifestyle as opposed to just a temporary quick fix to your weight loss. It took me about three months to lose a little over 15 pounds on L.A. weight loss. The weight has been gone for about a year. Um, I was wearing. The weird thing is, is that, you know, I've had liposuction. So, you know, you know, the, the body is. Um, it, it, it's reconfigured. I'm, oh, hell, I'm trying to justify. I'm wearing these jeans are size five. I'm wearing a size 5 Levi's today. I got them at Kohl's. They're having a big sale on Levi's. They always have a big sale. They have the, like, the best selection. Wait, but I'm talking about LA weight loss, right? Why do I always have to branch off? And I just say all that to say, never in my life did I ever think that I'd be wearing a pair of size 5 jeans. It's like unbelievable to me. I swear. Hey, Shaylin, come here and look. Look at the tag. Because I know you probably think I'm lying. I know. Because to me, I'm still like a big cow. You know, you can change your body, but you can't change your... Do you see the tag? Yeah. Size what? Yep, size five. There you go. Wow. Size five. Wow. And guess what? And I'm not straining the um the lycra in them. Like you see, I'm not straining and stretching it up. They just they just fit. They're size five. That's it. As a matter of fact, I could pull them down. I could pull them. Oh, excuse me. I could pull these down without even undoing the the button. Yeah. And thank you, LA Weight Loss. That last 15 pounds was really crucial. Listen. It's real food for real people. No food group is off limits. Sure, I could have had some of this stuff, you know, from Amy Ruth. Say, I just didn't, I just wasn't in the mood, you know. I'm wearing my size five jeans. It's like inspiration not to, you know, like cow out. So I have this one-on-one -on -one weight loss counselor while I was losing weight. Her name is Diane. You'll have a one-on-one -on -one weight loss counselor also. They are a wealth of help because it's the one person that understands your struggles like nobody else does. Um... L.A. weight loss is a beautiful thing. You can eat lean cuisine. You can eat at Fridays. You can you can eat at any restaurant. They, it's a it's a lifestyle. I I can't explain it to you. You just have to go and check it out for yourself. No crazy pills. No gym. I don't know about you. I I'm not. A, I, I admit it. I'm allergic to the gym. I just mm 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 mm. And it worked. 
So 1-800-448-TRIM. And you can call whenever you are ready. 1-800-448-TRIM. L- I mean, give them a call. I'm going to give you the number again. 1-800-448-TRIM. LA Weight Loss. Thank you for my size 5 uh, status. Just in this particular pair of jeans. Now, you know, depending on the jean, like some Miss 60 jeans, it might be a size 12. You know what I mean? But for these, a size 5. Can't beat that. Thank you, LA Weight Loss. Alrighty, everybody. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Um, Tana Hoy is going to be coming in next hour, and he's going to be doing some... Um, well, psychic, psychic. He's a psychic medium. I believe I'm getting the title correctly, and he uh, is a friend of the show. He's been here before, and I'm going to ask him about a lot of celebrities. Some of you guys are faxing over your birth dates and questions for Tana. That's terrific, and we're going to be going to the telephones as well. Now, um, I was telling you about George Foreman in the last break, and somehow I got sidetracked. It happens frequently here on the show, but I want you to know that he's expanding from the grill to. Is a whole signature line of products. Now, this says that um, he hopes by partnering with a new company called MM Company Inc. that um, he can expand into a range of products. Now, we already know he's got the Lean Green Grilling Machine. Who doesn't have one of those? Sales of those shot $77 million. In the beginning, to two, two, uh, $792 million in just four years. The, you know, the first four years of business. Isn't that fabulous? And he says, um, you put your name on something, it better be the best. You only got one shot. Shout out to all the big men. I know you all are buying his clothes at the Rochester's Big and Tall Shop. He's got everything from drawers to those big man suits with the with the secret tab inside where you can expand the waist and stuff. <laughs> You know, so excuse me, you can just close it uh, casual uh, nail, big and tall. That clothing line was launched in 2003. And I'll tell you, it's been unbelievable for him. I see those clothes all the time. We have one near our house. You ride past the window, you see the clothes in there. Anyway, so apparently what he's going to do is he's going to be partnering with the company and supersizing it. They're a publicly traded company, too, MM Company, Inc. Because we were talking about young George Foreman. Well, there are actually, actually a bunch of sons named George, but we're talking about them in the filthy rich cattle drive. And now the father is continuing to make more money and just amazing. Remember he did McDonald's? He does. He did Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know if he still does Meineke. Right? Those endorsement dollars, that's good money. <clears throat> Vivica Fox is still talking about 50 Cent. and Vivica, I love you, but I'm getting a little tired of this. It's getting a little embarrassing. You know? Viv, we women of a certain age, we're supposed to slay these young'uns and leave them where? Down there. Not even back there. We're supposed to leave them catching their down there. We're not supposed to, you know, be acknowledging that. At least not where the public can see. It's like to me, if Demi and Ashton's relationship ends, I don't want to hear about her being absolutely, you know, loco, cuckoo, you know, ro- rolling up and, and doing a lot of talking. Even if that's the way she feels and that's the way she treats it, let them shh, 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 shh. And you know, I love gossip. I'm not one to gossip, but I love gossip. I don't want to hear about that. It's like embarrassing just because, you know, don't let, don't, don't let, don't let them do that to us. So Vivica is urging 50 to continue to write rap songs about their failed relationship. (laughs) Because Vivica says it's making men more interested in her. She dated 50 for a brief period of time in 2003. They broke up. Initially, she was horrified. Um, She heard about the breakup on the radio, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is what she says. To be honest, that romance <clears throat> that romance is not a good memory. It was very intense for three months. It wasn't the best of public breakups, and he's written songs about it. That's ghetto love, his way of dealing with the breakup. I must have been special because two years later, he's still writing and talking about me. No! <laughs> By you acknowledging it, 
You're looking crazy. He must have been special. <laughs> we are from two different worlds, but he is very charming and a total sweetheart. He snuck into my life like a gentleman. He left differently. It was very disappointing the way he handled the breakup. What he doesn't realize, the more he raps about me, the more he makes other men curious about me. Other guys are saying, what's good about Vivica? And that that he's still talking about her. Wow. I got to tell you. Wow. Wow. Viv, please stop talking about him. She's supposed to be coming to the show um, in September. And when, he, when she comes to the show... I'm not going to even mention him because I don't. I don't. I'm not going to. And you know, I don't even want to encourage her to talk about him because she's supposed to. You know, grown woman, handle her business, slay that little young and leave him down on the floor. Even if he breaks her heart, she's supposed to have a stiff upper lip to the world, like, hmm. and never acknowledge it. I mean, at this point, it's been two years. You know. Um, Elisa, who books the show. And we're all TV Nistas on the show. You know, last night I was at the comedy club. I still have yet to see this Venus and Serena show. But so she's going on and on. I get in the office today. She's like, I love the relationship that they have with their mother. And like that. On the other hand, she said, Brett Ratner looks so queenie. And Serena and Brett look so awkward. Apparently, they had some kiss on the show and it's just he's all short and fat and queenie and she's all you know tall and muscular and it just looked awkward it just looked really contrived the relation the whole bit wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean I don't know what to say I haven't seen the show do you, do you guys watch the do you it's on uh, the family channel I've seen, yeah, oh. I've, I've seen a piece of it did you like it it looked very contrived like you know it was all about family and they loved each other they just show how much they support each other and love each other see after being Bobby Brown we have a whole different yeah. expectation on reality shows <laughs> you know we just yeah. have a whole it, oh and it's Thursday it's Thursday <laughs> Is this the second to last um, episode that we're going to yeah. see? Or is this the last one tonight? No, the, the last one. This is the second to last yeah. one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be there for the hour before. Because whether I catch reruns of Being Bobby Brown or some reruns of The D-List with Kathy Griffin, I'm, I'm, I'm all about Bravo tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Halle Barry's talking about when she was a cheerleader in high school. Isn't she so that girl that we sh that we, we would have probably not been cool with? Unless you were cool in high school. I mean, I wasn't. So I, you know, Halle would have definitely, we would have been on opposite sides of the school. She says, when I was a cheerleader, I forgot to wear the little panties that match my outfit. And I had my regular underwear on instead. And no one told me that they let me do a cartwheel and stuff. And that was pretty embarrassing. Shut up. <laughs> exactly. Damn cheerleaders. It's windy, man. I'm constantly sleeping with my baby's daddy. He is engaged to get married to someone else. Should I give it all up and say, well, I try to have a relationship here? You can't have a relationship. He's engaged to somebody else. He's about to get married. Really? I just can't take it. The Wendy Williams. And it's a vice hour here on the show. Our psychic psychic medium is that what you would call yeah, yourself? Psychic right. Medium. I always get confused, Tana, with um, with your uh, with your title. <laughs> Tana okay. Hoy is back on the show. Everybody, he was here several months ago, and he is phenomenal in his readings. All right, the first thing I want to get to before I get to um, oh, and by the way, everybody, all Tana needs from you by way of facts is just your question. Just a specific question that you've got. And then make sure you include your name or else a fake name or something like that so exactly. that we can shout you out. Exactly. And you know what he's good at? He's good at um, telling you whether your husband or boyfriend is cheating, like with your best friend, whether you're about to be fired. Are you good with that? I'm good with that. I'm good with anything. That you, I mean, I like to tell the truth. What I tell people is, you know, a lot of psychics and psychic means are whitewash. I'm going to tell it like it is. So okay. if you want to know the truth, so ask like, us. Here's, here's a person. They didn't sign their name. 
But she says, what do you see in my future romantically as well as my career? Well, how do you know that if she doesn't have a name? Exactly. And I'd want to know specifically what area she wants me to focus on. Okay. Because romantically, that woman's life's a mess. That's not a question that we could answer oh. just real quick. Her life, uh, you know, is just a mess. My guides actually tell me that she hooks up with alcoholics or drug addicts, and her it's a pattern that she's always had, and she needs to do some kind of psychological her counseling. Her July 10th. Mm -hmm. but she needs to do a cycle. I don't really work with numbers. I work with the guides and angels. She needs to do some other counseling so she can attract different kinds of guys. I don't wish to disclose my name, but my birthday is, and you can call me Shelly. Okay. Can you please, all right, Shelly. Shelly's question is, can you please tell me what do you see for me in the next six to nine months regarding my marriage and my well-being? Well, the marriage is not going to work out. My oh. guides tell me oh. that this man is, I'm getting a feeling that he's kind of abusive, and I think that she needs to think about oh. finding some kind of shelter or protection. There's some kind of something about him. He's incredibly restrictive with her. Okay. Shelly, do something to get out of that. Here's a person. She just says, I'm a 34-year-old woman. She just celebrated her birthday. She's been single most of her life. And her question for you, Tana, is when will I find my special someone? Two years. There's going to be a man coming about two years. Look for a name like Jay, like John, Jose, Jose, something like that. And he's in banking. He's in banking. He's in banking. Tana, is Zoe really a virgin? <laughs> is, is she really a virgin? Yeah. She Are you is, saying you're a virgin? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where did we get that? She's a virgin she, in her mind. <laughs> oh, wow, Zoe! Hey, you know, you know wow. what? There's a law. If you don't have sex for a certain amount of time, Zoe. your virginity comes back. Did you know that? Yeah. That's right. Well, That's you, right. You'll always be a virgin to me, Zoe. <laughs> me too. But you've been busted. Goose, it would help if everybody's microphone was on, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Will Goose ever get the buttons right? <laughs> <laughs> Which buttons? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's your own private reading. Depends you're asking there, right? <laughs> Today is my fourth year wedding anniversary. Oh, Oh, that's okay. They're, they're not chatting out to you. They, okay. Okay. Look, look, let's talk about Whitney Houston. Uh huh. What is her career looking like after being Bobby Brown? Yeah, I, I don't see Whitney's career coming back, to tell you the truth. I really, really do. Do you see sobriety coming back? No, there's a lot of issues. I think I I love Whitney. I really love Have Whitney. Have you seen Being Bobby Brown? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Well, it's probably best that you haven't seen it because now we're getting you from the purists because I don't see uh, much going on. Uh, I don't see that show that really show. going anywhere. And right. I, I, you know, I mean this in the kindest of ways, mm -hmm. but that relationship, what my guides have always told me, it's it's almost like it's kind of toxic, you know, or addictive. I think they kind of enable each other. Yeah. And I, th I really hope that they both can, you know, find some sobriety so they can have a, a sober life and a more sane marriage. You now, know what I'm saying? Their daughter, Bobby Chris, is a tweenie. She's not yet a teen. Mm -hmm. She's like that in-between age. I think she's going to be 12. Bobby Chris looks like a, an, an absolute psychiatric explosion by the time mm -hmm. she's 15 or 18. Mm -hmm. Exactly. What do you see um, in Bobby Chris's future? Well, that child, if they do, that's why I was talking earlier about I hope they do something because if they don't, the child's going to grow up. My guides are showing me that child's going to grow up with the exact same addiction problems that mom and dad have. And that's what happens on that merry-go-round. Wow. That's why I think it's important that they both get some help. Because if not, they're teaching their kid the same thing. And my guide showed me that you're, that's a good word. I, I, it's already, I think if we really saw behind the scenes, there's some real troubled things in that kid's mind. Mm. How's, how's Bobby Brown's solo singing career going to do? I don't see it doing well. I uh, really see that a lot of that stuff is, you know, I, I don't see those stars rising again. Mm. I think anytime they start to rise, their addiction's going to start to kick in, mm -hmm. and then they're going to have problems again, and then the star is going to burn out. I think the worst thing that can happen for them is for their careers to take off. Because the more money and fame and all that they get, the more they're going to... I keep seeing them just getting back into drugs. It's like that cycle. They need to take some time off and work on their own lives. Michael Jackson, guilty or innocent? Oh, Michael Jackson is guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Just because you have money and get good attorneys to get off doesn't make you innocent.
guilty, guilty, Has guilty. he learned his lesson? No, Michael Jackson is, you know, my guides were telling me the reason he's gone over to that foreign country and uh-huh. looking at those houses. I, Michael Jackson is going to continue to do exactly what he wants. But in those countries with his money, he can buy silence. No one's going to bother him. It's different in third world. I don't know if it's a third yeah. world country, but it's different in those foreign countries. Right. That here. My guide showed me that's exactly why I went here. There's attorneys that suggested that maybe he goes to this other country so that, you know, he doesn't have these problems right. again. Oh, and goodness. I see Michael repeating and continuing the same things, but we're just not going to hear about it. Mm-mm-mm. It's going to be too far away for the paparazzis to go. Jay-Z and Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Um, will they get married? I don't see that right now. I, I see them continuing to have this relationship. Okay. Mm-hmm. I wish they would be a little more, what, forthright, I guess? With each other? Yeah. Or about, And I just wish that they would... I see the relationship doing well. Okay. I see it growing. Uh and children before the marriage, maybe? I see kids. Are they a little... Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing kids. I'm getting them confused. They're not the ones that are kind of quiet about their relationship or don't really claim it. Oh, Did wait, they, we can't talk about people you're confused about. Okay, I was. that's why I was saying okay. forthright, because I was thinking of another couple. Sorry, that's why my brain's Well, they're pretty getting, forthright, though, about it. Okay, I mean, you know, my, my psychic kissing. brain was just getting confused in a moment. All right, well, my, I see those two getting married. I see them getting married. No, now this. we don't. We, we can't believe you, because no. you, you didn't know who they were. I was, no, I was getting her confused. Who's the... There was someone that we were talking about that isn't very open about their relationship. I don't know. Oh, oh, we were talking about Lisa Ray behind the scenes. Yeah, that's where I was confused. Lisa Ray, no, all right, I was I'm sorry. thinking about this one. I was confused. Yeah, because we were talking about that. No, but that's why in my brain it was getting confused. No, I really feel that these two have a... Jay-Z uh, and Beyonce. Yeah, have a okay. love. She's beautiful, by yes, the way. Yes, she is. They have a, there's a real pure innocence about this relationship. Okay. I really think that that relationship, if we, if we could be flies on the wall and see them, I think there's a lot of love between oh. them. A lot of, you know, I, I, I think we're... Have you ever met her? Uh, yes, I, I have. I get a twice. sense that she's really down to earth. Earth and yeah, kind yeah of very, she is. You know, that's my sense with her. Country cool. I've never met her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel that her, this guy, it's, I think he's the same way. There's just a really nice, they haven't let their fame go to their head. Wow. I think it's nice. going to be a beautiful marriage. It's going to be another, uh, what's her, uh, Kurt Russell and uh, and Goldie Hawn. Yeah, been married all those years. I think it's going to be another one of those. Well, no, they, never, they never got married, but, lived, they, but they, they lived, lived together like, married. like a marriage and have a child. And Let's talk about... What everybody else is talking about. Brad, Angelina, and Jennifer Aniston. Mm-hmm. No good is going to come to Angelina because of how she got him. That's always been my opinion. Mm-hmm. I went to the Kitson Boutique on Robertson. I got my Team um, team Aniston t-shirt. I am down with the wife. I don't care. What do you mean you're down with the wife? I'm on, I'm on uh, Jennifer Aniston's side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that Angelina Jolie is a viper. Mm-hmm. What do you see in Brad and Angelina's relationship? Well... Oh, gosh. I'm kind of feeling like that relationship is going to go places. Oh! (laughs) Um, Simply because, well, I I think that, let me go back a little bit. I don't want to, I know you really like uh, Jennifer. But say it how you feel. Yeah, I think Jennifer's got some emotional things that she might need to work on because I'm almost getting a sense with her. When 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 I'm looking at her and reading about her, I almost get a sense sometimes that she looks for the outside to fill the inside. And she's not really learning to fill the inside Well, this is yet. the same woman who broke off the relationship with her own mother. Yeah, and so I, I think that you Jennifer's know. got some things that uh, oh, hopefully that she'll start to work on. I think she's... Uh, her and Vince Vaughn, I don't think this is really going to no, go I, anywhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think we might see some other men coming in and out of her life. I think the Brad and her, the personalities just, you know... I, I don't see either of them as bad people. Mm-hmm. It's just sometimes there's certain personalities that just shouldn't be together. You know, they're better to be friends. So, Jennifer has issues, and maybe we shouldn't look at Angelina as being some homewrecker. I don't see Angelina as a homewrecker. I see Brad as kind of, you know, more earthy, not a very, you know out there social person right she likes to go out and party and, and, and i mean not party in the party side but she's more social Jen, who jennifer yeah okay. and so you put those two together and they're gonna be a little bit bored all right let's talk about angelina and, and i see angelina's more of a homebody the Uh-oh. motherly type a uh, brad you know more of a homebody i see this relationship gelling really nicely oh. because i feel like their personalities kind of mesh. I don't see Angelina as a home wrecker. I see oh. I, I see Jennifer more I. as just, you know, it wasn't a good combination and I don't have anything against Jennifer. I think she's beautiful and all that. For but I think we're going to get the sense I think uh, that uh, uh, Jennifer might be a little bit emotionally tough to be in a relationship. She's going to take a really special person Oh my to be gosh! With her. Wow! <laughs>
It's going to take someone really special. So I don't think Brad and Angelina should get the bad. I think it's just, you know, we've all dated people. I have, but yes. they're not bad people. I say we should have been friends, not lovers. Yes. I think it's that kind of thing. Yes. I think it's that kind of thing. Now, how, um, how ugly, if at all, will the divorce get with um, Eddie Murphy and Nicole Murphy? Yeah, there's. <laughs> we're probably going to see some things come out or some secrets. Uh, let me say it this way. On the bargaining table, there's going to be... Eddie Murphy's got some secrets that he's covered really well. That is what my guides tell me. And so I think that his wife... It's been very difficult being married to Eddie. I think that she's had to keep up some images and deal with a. She had to deal with a lot of crap. That woman, my hat off to her. Oh, um, easy, Vinny. We're moving on. I just asked Tana Hoy a question. Zoe. But I, I, I don't see it being messy publicly. But if I get if we could be flies on the wall. What I would give. Sir CX says I'm 28 years old and I'm a single man. I feel like I've been single for years. I'm ready to meet someone of quality. Can you please? let me know what is in store for me. Yeah, there's no relationship right now, and that's the point, quality. Aww. They call them soulmates for a reason. Mm -hmm. That's because they don't come along very often. Mm. 32 years old, he's going to be happy. Okay, so you got four more years. Four more CX. years. Don't rush it because when you meet, you're going to feel like no time ever existed. Oh, by the way, Tana is also <laughs> very good at giving you his psychic median, medium medium um Yes or no to homosexuality? Well, yeah, there was Bisexuality. one woman that called in once, went over and her boyfriend were going to get together, and I told her they hadn't slept together in six months, and he was gay, and she verified it, and I just verified things for her that she knew, and they actually, she actually ended up him coming out, and she found a new boyfriend, he's got his boyfriend, and they're happy. Wow. She called one, and they're going to get married, and I told her, don't do it. My name is Angela, and I live in North Carolina. I'm a, I've been single my whole life. Please tell me if and when I will get married or meet someone. I want to tell her to be cautioned. There's going to be two guys that she's going to meet second guy she could get it should get involved with first guy is no good he's going to be really like everything she wanted but he's going to turn out to be a drunk okay em in pennsylvania how successful will my marriage be that's what em wants to know i'm uh, not i don't know my question would be why did you get married in the first place crap my name is brenda it's a fake name uh -huh. should i get back together with my ex-boyfriend no 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 he claims no. he changed oh no 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 and i'm levitating right now and turning around in the chair i mean i can claim anything that means true. Cassandra wants to know what do you see in her future? Where in the process of buying a house and money is an issue? Yeah, with the house that you're looking at, there's problems in the basement. There's water problems. Mm -hmm. Go visit that house after it's rained or squirt water around the base. A lot of water before you make that purchase. Something hasn't been disclosed to you and it's going to cost you thousands of dollars to fix it after you sign the contract. Okay. Uh, what do we have, Goose? 30 seconds? All right, we're going into the break. We'll continue to take your faxes. Your birthday is not necessary. Just get right to your question. Put your name, real or fake. And also, while you're faxing, you over there, you could jump on the phones. 866-GET-WENDY. Tana Hoy is here, and he is incredible. Be thought, Have your um, ideas thought out, your question, and then he'll answer, and then we must move on to the next caller. Thanks, everybody. It's Wendy, man. I've been talking to this young lady. She called me at home, and I was listening to your show, and she um, said, that she doesn't know any straight guys that listen to the Wendy Williams show. No. Plenty of straight guys listen to the show. All right, so, yeah. Ow. So what should I tell her? Just it, Tell her how you do it. The Wendy Williams Experience. <laughs> Yo, did you catch this flashback? Let's just revisit that Snoop Dogg fight and, and hit my gin and juice. I brought my CDs in from the car, and I was thinking... This is clearly not music to fight by. This is music to you swag in the club. What? This is like a theme song when you first get in a party. Oh, shoot. Bartender, give me my gin and juice. All right, what's up? How you doing? All right. And you swagger through the party, sipping out of that skinny straw. Shoulders snapping up and down. Neck knocking back a bit. See what I'm saying? You see something cute and fine standing over there? Now you start your head nod and you bite your bottom lip. Mm. <laughs> right? And you take another sip and everybody in the party is beautiful. And you had you some get right before you got in the club and your head is in a, the right space. Turn this up. <laughs> Nobody's fighting. Everybody's lamping. Oh. 
so we gon' blow our ounce to this. She's a freezer for a second now. Right? You now you got that right there, right? But they're on stage fighting at the at the. I I just don't get that. Now, the same club, the same people, but you throw on, as far as I'm concerned, music to fight by. Hit my MOP. Oh, shoot. Chuck your jewelry. Put the gin and juice down. Pick up an empty bottle of something. It might have to be your weapon of choice. Today, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> yeah, what up, y'all? This your boy, Young Lloyd, man. Newest, youngest member of the Science C family. In the words of Black Child, slow motion is better than no motion. But how you doing? Hi, Wendy. Hi. I just have one question. Okay, what's your name? Denise. Denise, you're talking with Tana. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, Tana. Hi, Hi there. How are you? Good, and you? Good, thanks. Um, I'm 30, and I would like to know, will I ever get married? I don't see a marriage right now. Who is there? Some guy that you were engaged to that you didn't end up getting married to? You got a it broke off or something, or you mm-hmm. thought you'd marry? Thought I'd marry. Yeah, that guy was a loser. I'm glad he's out of the picture. <laughs> There's going to be, you know what I'm talking about, total yes. loser, right? Yes. Okay. Good thing you didn't marry him. That was a blessing in disguise. There's going to be a man in about eight months, nine months, and this guy, you're going to know him because when you meet him, it's going to be like you've known each other for a long time, okay? Mm-hmm. He's got a T name, a T name. His name starts with a T, but it's an unusual kind of name. Okay. And he's very good looking. Talk about tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> That's him. He's in the car business. Okay, good luck, honey. Right, good thank luck. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, you're on the radio with Tana Hoy and Wendy. Hi, how you doing, Wendy? Good, how are you? Okay, oh, good. Sorry, and and what's, your, what's your name? My name is Dee. Go ahead, Dee, with your question. Hi, Dee. I want to know, how are you? I want to know, how would you see my future with my boyfriend and mm. as well as my career? Yeah, I'm just going to take one because of the time. Yeah. And I'm going to go a little bit with your boyfriend. Have you suspected him cheating on you? Yes. Yeah, he is. Crap. Because my guy, and I'll tell you what, honey, it's someone you know. Oh, my God. Oh, sorry? It's somebody you know. Really? It's someone you've suspected he's been sleeping with a friend of yours, maybe? Wow. No. Well, there's someone oh, he is. Wow. Okay. It's, a, I don't know, how good of a friend. Wouldn't be a good friend. Wouldn't even be a friend to me if they were sleeping with someone I knew. All right. But it's someone you know. Keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for calling. Okay. Thanks. Hi, it's Wendy, and Tana Hoy's here, too. Go ahead with your name and your question. Hey, my name's Arabia. I just kind of have a long-term relationship with my ex for seven years, and we're still seeing each other, and I want to know, is that going anywhere? No, it's not going anywhere. Do you know about the other woman that he got pregnant? What? Do you know about the other woman? Before you two were together, he had gotten another woman pregnant. Did she have the baby? Or yeah, when she was in her, when he was like 19 or 18, he had gotten a woman pregnant. Did he ever share that with you? Um, no, he didn't. Would you understand what I mean? That guy doesn't share a lot of stuff with you? Yeah. He's kind of a, he's a liar. Do you know this? Wow. Really? Mm-hmm. My guides tell me he's told you many things later that you suspected weren't true. Okay, thanks for calling. Good luck Thank to you. you. I want somebody to call with the is he gay question. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hi, it's Wendy and Tana Hoy's here too. What's your name? Oh, um, Deidre. Okay, and what's your question, Dee? I just wanted to know if I was going to stay with my boyfriend and if I was going to ever get my MBA. Uh, I'm going to take the boyfriend question again. I do see you two staying together. You two have a pretty nice relationship. Yeah, we do. Yeah, because he's your soulmate. Oh. Has oh. he proposed to you yet? I turned. I don't really want to get married, but I don't mind living together forever. But. Well, honey, he's going to propose to you. He's going to push that issue a little bit. But, you should consider it. And I'm curious next about May or the June, NBA. there's a ring. Oh, next May or June, there's a ring. Yeah. I'm curious about the NBA. Is she going to get it, yes or no? Yeah, you'll get your NBA. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's the easy part. Love's so hard. You're lucky you found a good one. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. I love your show, Wendy. Thank you. Okay. All right. Hi, it's Wendy and Tana Hoy's here, too. What's your name? My name's Aisha. Hi, Aisha. What's your question? I want to know when my husband and I should expect our first child. Are you already pregnant? No. Did you miss a period? (laughs) I'm positive I'm not pregnant. Oh, you are going to be within the next month. (gasps) Are you serious? Who has the twins in your family? You're having twins. Are there twins on your husband's? My husband's mother is a twin. Yeah, you're going to have them next, honey. They're going to be twin boys. Congratulations. Oh, God. 
<laughs> you guys have tried for a while, huh? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I know, and it's been difficult for you to get pregnant. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's what my guides told me. You're going to get pregnant in about a month. Okay, good. Listen, congratulations. Thank you. And, and, and we'll take the next call. I'm all caught up in the drama. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Wendy and Tana Hoy's here too. What's your name? My name is Patricia. Okay, Patricia, what's your question? Some question about my relationship. Okay, uh-huh. go ahead. What's your question, please? Will we stay together? No, I don't see. Does he drink or do drugs? Have some kind of obsessive compulsive thing about him? Yes, he does. Yeah, no, honey, it's going to get worse. Is this drugs or alcohol? Uh, both. Yeah, because I see him ODing. (gasps) Oh, God, ODing? Yeah, I see him having an overdose. Okay. This man's a mess, sweetie. Oh, God. Get out of it, get some counseling, and go on with your life. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. Take care. Bye-bye. I hate to break that news, but... Yeah. You know, she's got to be prepared. This guy's a mess. Okay. Hi, it's Wendy and Tana Hoyes here. What's your name? Uh, my name is Natalie. And your question? My question is, I haven't been in a relationship for over six years. Um, I've been seeing someone since um, December. I don't know where things are going with this guy. Mm-hmm. I, I like him a lot. He cares a lot about me. He's a commitment and- phobe. Oh, God. Yes. You know what I mean? He has a commitment phobe. And again, I feel like a broken record, sweetie, but you're not the only one he's got on the string. Oh, God. Yeah. Are there unaccounted for times sometimes that don't match up or... uh, Say that again? Are there times that are unaccounted for that can't really be put... Yeah. Yeah, that's because he's out with these other women. Oh, God. Well, he's a real sociable guy. Oh, oh and, I, he sure is. That's why he's out with all these women. Uh-uh. Oh, right. Denial's not a river in is, Egypt. Is, is there somebody else on the horizon for me? Uh, you get rid of this loser and, and then call back. We'll talk. <laughs> take he's care. He's going to keep you busy. Okay, we'll take one more. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hi, I have a question. Okay, uh, Tana's right here. Go ahead. Okay, my name is Rose, and I would like to know, will I get back with my husband? I do see you two getting back together, but I have to tell you, you guys have to talk more. You're both very bullheaded. Okay. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. I know, and you're just as stubborn as him. So you guys are like two rams hitting heads. You guys have to... You have to put your pride aside and talk if you want it to work. If you guys can't learn to talk, don't even think about getting back together. Okay. Oh, you're you're so right. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. He's amazing. He's Tana Hoy. How do you get your private readings? Give him your website and all like that. Yeah, the website is Tana Hoy. It's Tana like Montana. T A N A H O Y. Okay. Dot com. Tana Hoy dot com. Okay. Now and on the website, they can find out about your. Cruise. Yeah, I've got a psychic development cruise coming up next April from the tenth to the eighteenth. We're going to Belize and Costa Rica and Panama. It's a really good price. Go learn about connecting with your angels and going to learn about doing a past life regression on the cruise. Going to be all kind of neat stuff we're doing. Doing. Wow. And it's so going to be fun. So they can find out about you, a private reading, and your cruise. On the website, tanahoy.com. T-A-N-A-H-O-Y.com. The link on the date doesn't work. Click on the picture, by the way. Okay. The picture will take you to the link of the cruise. Listen, you are uh, just a fabulous man. Look, oh, a, a couple too. of Thank last you. things. My name is Mia. It's a fake name. Okay. I want to know, will my marriage last? E- it's Yeah, but it's not going to be quality. She'll never leave him. Okay, my name is Nakia. I'm 26. Too many bad relationships to count. I want to know if my soulmate is out there and when. Yeah, don't give up. You know, it's her strength. Keep going, girl. If you keep going, you're going to find the man that's going to sweep you off your feet. You just had bad luck. Will Arthur? Will Arthur get married? Oh, he doesn't want to know. No, he don't want to know. Okay, we're not going to tell you, Arthur. Don't worry. I'll tell you in private. Art Art gets freaked out. (laughs) (laughs) I got to tell you something. You know, you you, um, scare a lot of people, you and what you do. I don't know if I scare people. It's just I think what people are afraid of is knowing the truth. I I don't. I've never given anyone news where they've been up crying. Most people are having readings say they feel empowered because the truth gives you knowledge and power. T-A-N-A-H-O-Y. Tanahoy.com. Thank you so much. Wendy, thank you. Wow. Keep it here, everybody. Uh, Some more of the comedian is coming in next, and then we'll gossip.
My boss came into my office and uh, he basically brushed up against me with his penis. Okay. Oh. Um. Yeah. So I, I don't know what. Well, how can I? How should I handle that situation? <laughs> the Wendy Williams experience. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Jay-Z, everybody, is uh, on the list for the 2007 Rolls Royce. You hear about this? $500,000. Very Negroidian. But that's Jay-Z. He's got that money, right? The car inside. Well, you can get a choice of 18 different hides for the interior. And the options on the car include a built-in espresso maker or a $12,000 crystal bar set. Wow. Wow. Well, there are two other rappers interested in purchasing this particular Rolls Royce. Well, guess what? These two rappers, according to Panache, can't afford it and are contemplating taking out loans with their record companies to get it. You black. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> 107.5 WBLS, New York. Let's do it. Do it. What's your name? Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. 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 Yeah, this your boy Lloyd. This is Tawanda Braxton. Hey, what's up? This is Sierra. And right now you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah. <clears throat> Bring her in. Where's some more? Your Tana Hoy. Some more was running around the office. <clears throat> Normally, excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a, a Caesar salad with extra dressing. Damn. <laughs> 80 calories a teaspoon. I got about 200 calories worth of dressing on it. Is that how you eat your... And I and I, I will always have fat thoughts when it comes to salad. It's got to be creamy. It can't be, you know, some old watered-down vinaigrette. What? You better give me some blue cheese and put the blue in the cheese and throw it on there. So so what's going to happen? Are you are you going to reign as the queen of comedy? It's some more. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. No, he, he's scary, though, Tana Hoy, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Let me tell you, I was just like, he came in the room and he was like, I want to read you. I was running from him. Yeah. Because I am like happy in my relationship. I'm like, Is that your man in the office? Don't start none, don't be none. He looks like Charles Barkley. Oh, yeah, doesn't he? He's cute. Doesn't he? And I he mean, is sexy. And he likes black women, and unlike is, Charles Barkley. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. And he's sexy. I love it. Now, is that the guy from that Miami? Is the one. That is the one. You've been with him for a while, hmm. some more. I don't hold my stomach in no more around him. Wow, you know, that's, that's a long. Big. That's good. Do you take a Girl, dump? Girl, do you know take what a I'm dump? About? Uh, do you, and 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 if the smell wafts out, it's I okay. Do. What? Wow, I do. Has he ever seen you on the toilet? Yes. I call him to bring the toilet tissue. Wow, this thing is real. Wow, that is this real. This thing is real. I don't, when, when I step, when I don't put my eyebrows on, right, right, right. Okay, <laughs> right. That means I'm in love. Exactly. I get up, I don't even put my eyebrows on some days. Wow. That's why Tanner, when Tanner came in the room, he's like wanting to talk to me. I'm like, look, don't make me cry, make my eyelashes come off. Right, I'm right. like, no, uh-uh. So what did you ask him me. about? And I don't want to well, be all into about, it. He was talking about my career. He knows that I have a very important deal on the table. He said, you know, you have he to He knew deal. about the deal yeah, before you he, said it? he knew about the deal. He said, you're going for this deal and you just got to make them, you got to go in and you got to have a stone poker face. You can't let them know that you're excited. Right. Because there's two companies that are going to be bidding for you and you know he got me all caught up i'm hyped now he told me to wear a business suit okay no cleavage yeah yeah i was gonna right. say cover right, everything right, up right because right? you know i'm yeah I'm cleavage yeah, all day yeah, long yeah right? yeah so you know he said no cleavage you know wear a business suit. yes go in there and let them know that you're serious about what you want to do okay and he said that you'll get the best deal that way so now um, and see i always took the anna nicole route he want me to go in there and be oprah See, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, see, yeah. You, yeah. you and me both. Look, Trace I had an important baby. business meeting last week in Los Angeles. <laughs> Look, I walked in. I had all my clear F me pumps from the president. <laughs> you know, they're the five inch ones, the clear loose no, no. And, and, and some true religions, but cut off at the knee and rolled up and no. a rock and roll t-shirt. I just came from the club in New York, landed right. on the flight. It was 11 no. a.m. meeting. No. 
<laughs> smudgy, you know the eye makeup looks better oh, when it's smudgy. Goodness. They they want reality. Here's reality. Thank you. Thank How you. How you doing? I'm here. <laughs> You look great, though. You look. Everybody, Wendy is like eighth grade thin. Fifteen pounds. I was. You look, are like five jeans. Look, oh my look, 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 I don't care what kind of diet I'm on. Yeah. If I don't get on the train, and I can't do like cute exercises, like I can't do like the little the little videos. I got to get down and nasty, funky with it. But I got to sweat, sweat. Why don't sweat. you count calories? What? <laughs> um, what? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> when you want to go, I don't have time to count calories. Look, our, um, your relationship. What do you do? What do you do? What are you, what are you, what are you doing? What I, is it? L.A. Weight loss? I, I already lost Let my 15 you, pounds. I, I went to L.A. Weight, weight loss. Oh, okay. This is the funniest thing. I went to L.A. Weight mm-hmm, loss, mm-hmm. and I signed up. Mm-hmm. They gave me all this like carb, carb-free tea and juice and right. all this kind of stuff. I never went back. When I tell you, they stalked me for like three months. Because you know they why? They kept calling me like every day. You're a carb craver. They apparently put you on the carb craver, carb lover's diet. That's what I was on. Really? And but you can eat real food. Like you can lean cuisine. You can go to Fridays. Oh, look, this is not an LA weight loss commercial. I want to talk about other okay. things, like with your man. Are you so comfortable with your nudity that you find yourself naked more than not oh, at yeah, home? I'm always naked. Yeah, and I have no curtains in the back of my house. Yeah, well, who cares? So yeah. it's like raccoons and everybody see me naked. Look, it's uh-huh. fabulous. So you've been I together with him for like three years now? It's been four years. Some more is four here. Four years. So you're not wearing like um, a fake, you know how no. some girls no. wear a, wear no, a wankster ring on their wedding finger. Yeah. But then you say, no, you know, we're just in love. We're not well, married gave, yet. Well, he gave me one, but I wear it sometimes. Sometimes I don't. Are you going to be engaged and get married? Uh, we'll probably just get married. I don't think we'll be engaged and then get married. Yeah. I think once you live together, a wedding is kind of like uh, cheesy. Yeah, why are you doing that? Right. I think you just get matching jogging suits and go to Vegas. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> After you live together, right? Everybody send checks. Don't send an iron. Don't send sheets. Look, do you want to have um, children? Check. Yeah, I do. I want to have babies, like babies. I want to get on a roll. Like, I want to have, like, before my six weeks is Tear up. Tear your body up. Get another one. She wow. says, that's what she goes. She goes, Tear your body up. Yeah, my are. mom is a twin, so I hope if I have two at one time, it'll be great. Yeah, well, you can get the special injection. Just, exactly. you know, take care of everything uh, no. at one time. I'm scared what they might look like, a special injection. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Come out looking like a chicken. Yeah, you make money, though. You know, they'll be cute kids. They'll, be, they'll have good clothes. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, when I they get 18. I don't believe in buying kids good clothes. It, neither do they I. Grow, they grow fast. Yeah. I shop my my. I believe if you're broke, you just take your kids to Target, get them dressed in the dressing room, and let them leave. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's watching kids. Anyway, yeah, they're not yeah. even watching what they have on. Ron Artest was here last week. You know, oh, really? all Ron the money, Artest, all the money. Ron Artest, Ron Artest. He Which fought. Oh, the one that from fought. the Sonics. Yeah, I like um, him. From the um, Pacers, excuse Ron, me. Ron, get that ass, Artest. Yeah. I like him. So, um, he, his, his son was here with him. Oh, and, really? and his son had on Shaq sneakers. Now, I know Shaq sneakers because I buy them expensive? for my son. No, they aren't. You buy them at Target. Oh, they're at Target. Shaq Shaq has the bootleg Michael Jordan pose on the side. Oh, no, wow, bitch. that is too funny. Moms love Shaq. And I buy my son Shaq at Target. And, and, and so does our test with all the money, even though he lost exactly. a lot because of the fight. Exactly. So you're telling jokes all around the country or just here in New York? Man, some more. I'm, I'm all around the country. And I miss you because I'm living down in Miami. I don't get you down there. And hopefully so you never will. I'm calling all of my friends in Philly. I'm like, what is she talking about? Yeah, no, no, no. What is she talk- Why? We want you. No, because my parents live down there and I need them <laughs> oh, out of my life yeah. as far as what I do professionally because oh, then I yeah. can't and talk about third input. Right, exactly. See, do, by the way, do you do that? Sometimes. Yeah. What Sometimes. is that? Is that like is that like um <laughs> birthday and New Year's Eve and I'm, special occasion and high I'm octane too much. Yeah, I was just drink too much. Right. Brown juice. Exactly, exactly. When you drink too much. Yes. It's like a celebration. And then you forget about it until you wake up in the morning and you have that first seat on the bar stool in the kitchen. You're like, ow. Or you see that, that skid you mark last on the night? sheet. Yes. <laughs> You're like, what is that? What'd you do to me last night? I don't remember. You are silly. Yeah. You are too silly. But that's like special occasion. Oh, it is. Did, you, did you hear about Superhead? I love her. Well, I, you know what? I love I love the fact that she was honest. But then, you know, she's done nothing more than all of us have done. I'm one Come on. Another. My thing is, my thing is this, though. Mother's if left. you've got what you went into it for, mm-hmm. meaning like mm-hmm. if you did it and they gave you money, mm-hmm. then you weren't supposed to talk about it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it was supposed to be done. The deal is done. Yeah. Once you do it and you get your money, your deal is done. Speaking of but done, that means that you didn't get what you wanted to get. That's right. why you went out and wrote a book. That's why she wrote the book. Exactly. Now so she's, she's getting, getting money she, off the back end. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, and she's no stranger to that. Exactly. Yeah. Back end. <laughs> Although she says she never third inputted. Don't you so really? not believe that? I don't believe that. Please. I don't believe that. And um, what about Lisa Ray? Can we talk about her? Or are you going to be all clamped up and everything? Please. I have no celebrity friends. None. Don't, don't you like Kathy Griffin on the D-list? I like her. Is that? She is too hilarious. I, I love like, her, too. I love her, yeah. She's, did she have like $30,000 worth of surgery done or something? A lot, like? yeah, yeah, she yeah, like yeah, a lot. yeah. Yeah, she's, she, she could have went for like 60. Shut up. Right, she could have got more. She should have gotten more. Right, exactly. and a couple of hair plugs right up here right, in the front exactly, of her head. Right. Did you ever see when they lift her bangs up on the show? No. She's got a bigger forehead than Peebo Bryson. Like that's a big forehead. Like those bangs <laughs> are a definite so necessity. Right. Exactly. Let's talk about being Bobby Brown, and then we're gonna get back to Lisa. Ray. I love being Bobby Brown. Yeah. I love it. Tana said that I Whitney's not gonna have a career after this. You know, I absolutely. Who cares? I'll buy her albums, I and will. she's not gonna sober she's up. She's from Jersey. I'll, I'll buy it. Yeah. I'll buy it. She's from Jersey. Yeah. Life is what it is. And you know, people that people that criticize it all. Mm -hmm. No, what I says, take two white people on methamphetamine, give them the same show, and you'll get better highlights. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is not the worst thing. I I see people I see people like that all the time. Well, I love it. We love the show too. And don't forget, everybody, it comes on tonight, and then we'll talk about it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And about that little Bobby Chris. I though. think the daddy should spin off on his own show. Somebody said that. The daddy is hilarious. <laughs> Somebody said that. The daddy is hilarious. His father is hilarious. When he was eating pork and beans and passing yeah, yeah, and gas. gas. He was hilarious. Mm -hmm. I love it. Let's I talk about it. Lisa Ray and her new prime minister. Uh -huh. Like, you wait all your life. Uh -huh. You know, she had her daughter when she was really, really young. Exactly. But she's a hustler. Lisa Ray, one thing I can tell you about her, she is about her P-A-P-E-R. Mm -hmm. For real. And my only thing is... I, I respect women that are always about their game. Mm -hmm. Then you don't meet some guy and because he has it, then you want to be about your game. And then right. you go sleep with a guy that works at the 7-Eleven for okay. free. Okay. But if you're always about your game and you're always about your paper, then always be about your game and be about your paper. And that's how she has always been. Well, she really has. Well, she. So I, I so I wouldn't expect I'm anything like I was less. Supposed to ask something. I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less. Yeah, she married, she's marrying well, and of yeah. course. Mm, mm. Exactly. Zoe, what so she can get off of other people's husband. Yes, I was going to say, what's the basketball player's name? Uh, who, uh, who, what's his name? Gary, Nicole? Gary, Gary, Gary Payton. Uh -huh. I know Mrs. Payton's happy, but Mrs. Payton, don't Thank get you. too happy because while he's over here with the Turks and the Caicos <laughs> and his jump offs in the islands, <laughs> exactly. Miss, Mr. Lisa Ray. Right. Mrs. Lisa Ray. So did they get married? Yet? No, not yet. But he, she made sure she married well, and then he's got his island. So while he's in the island, so why, is, why isn't she going over to the island? Because when I tell you, I was Gary's over island, here, and, and so I is her show. Rule that island. Would you not like to be the queen of an island? No, no. I would. Look, I lived in Saint what? Croix. It's a trust. It's not all that what? living on an island. But still, shout I would out to rule all the, the cruisers. Island. It wasn't you. You're beautiful people. But of my life, my mind is just too fast it's for too that. Hot I'm to not ready to lay down and die. It's too hot for weaving. The island. And you would too. have to come about your weave, huh? Are you really that simple? Where you would, where you know, fashion doesn't matter. Baby, yes, you are you a something. fashion plate. But wait a minute, let me tell you. If I was the queen of an island, what? When I get off the plane, it would be thongs and stilettos, okay, with a little jean jacket on, coming okay. through. Seven I am days, the queen. Seven days later, then what? Seven days later, but still, they would have to acknowledge that I am the queen of this island, and then I go back. I come back every now and then. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But I would need the pampering. The pampering. I would need the paparazzi. I would let them have to let them know that I am the mama here. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. have to. You have to. I mean, she can always come back here. It'd I mean, be fun letting them know you're the mama here, though, to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Excuse so me, Will, Jada, you said what? Right. Is she gonna I get... will buy this show. Right, exactly. Buy you and I married him. So is he really, 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 really rich? I don't know. We have to examine that. We got to check his money first before we jump off. Because he could have a title without the bank account. That's what he has, Gary. Because we all have titles. <laughs> you're the queen of comedy. <laughs> right. And you're Hello. the queen of radio. Hello. Hello. Exactly. exactly. And Oprah is the queen of TV. But Hello. neither one of us got That's money half, quarter, or damn it. You know what I mean? Thank you. So what, hey, what's the title? Nothing. Does he have the chips to go with it? That's what we got to investigate. That's what we have to investigate. Exactly. In the meantime, Mrs. Gary Payton, me and Samora are saying, do not rest on your laurels. Because trust and believe. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Thank you.
Look, can you stay for another I'm break? Staying. Look, look, you more is actually here. To, it's tell, and you have a minute to tell again what you're doing. I'm I'm going to be at the Rascals Comedy Club this weekend at the Palisades Mall in West Nyack, New York. West Nyack, New York. I have no idea where that I was is. Say, but it's the Palisades Palisades Mall. Two shows tomorrow, Friday at 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Two shows Saturday, 8 and 10. And you can call and get tickets. 845-727-4242. Tickets will sell out fast. So yeah. get your tickets now. That's up there. I'm going to be here. 845 Berry Coast. is up there, right? Yeah. I go everywhere. Anywhere they have my cheese, You're I about your there. paper? Exactly. <laughs> I don't go to Bangladesh. If they got mine in Bangladesh, I'm there. All right, you all keep it here. We'll continue to talk about the, the day's hot topics with some more. You are perfectly yes. great. Thank you, baby. Um, company. Let's do it. All right, so you all um, keep it here and, 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 and hold your hats. And what? Wendy, man. Now, my question is about the kegel. Why is it every time I try to do them, I have an orgasm? Is that normal? Uh, I don't know, but it must be pleasurable. The Wendy Williams <laughs> Experience. Oh, shoot. It's 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul. I was talking behind the scenes with some more, and then I realized that, you know, we're doing a lot of talk, and when we get back on the radio, you know, like, like, like let's stop some more, and so I sent her in the other room, but we're having such a good time. I love her. She is so great. She's going to be at Rascals Comedy Club, some more is, at Palisades Center Mall in West Nyack, New York. There's going to be two shows on Friday, that's tomorrow, and two shows on Saturday. Um, the two shows, both nights, are 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. Rascals Comedy Club in West Nyack, New York at the Pal- Palisades Center. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh. Mall. Sorry. I'm going to give you the telephone number. 845-727-4242. Is this the Nelly song? Up in the morning, that DJ playing my song. What you going to do? Is it Jim Jones? Turn it up. It sounds like the Nelly song, too. Now, I hear the Jim Jones in it, but it sounded like Nelly. That's the first thing. Art, is that the same music? No, it's slightly different. Mm. Shout out to Jim Jones. Shout out to Nelly, too, for that matter. Shout out to the whole everybody. Okay, so when some more comes back in, we're going to talk about Faith, and we're going to talk about Missy Elliott, and we're going to talk about Halle Berry, and um, we're going to talk about... Mm, the MTV Video Music Awards coming up this weekend. You know, we'll talk about a bunch of stuff. I, I like having conversation with her. And she keeps up with everything. She, you know, reads and, and whatnot, you know, all the tabloids and stuff. So, you know. So listen, everybody. It's Pepsi Thursday here at WBLS. How would you like to see some more? And Steve Harvey. Cool. Hello. Yes. Not at Rascals. I'm talking this time on September 10th at New Jersey Performing Arts Center and Pack. Two funny people, one great show, and we've got free tickets every hour today. Right now, caller number 10 is going to pick up your passes. Free. 866-GET-WENDY. It's 866-GET-WENDY. And go to the show on September 10th. And um, if you would like to just call and get tickets as opposed to all the goofy winning, call NJ Pack box office. You know what I mean? They have tickets. So um, call and, 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 and get your tickets, and that's September 10th. It's uh, Look, the king and queen of comedy. You can't go wrong. You know, Steve Harvey and some more. You can't go wrong. All right, so, oh, you know what? Shout out to everybody in Brownsville. Don't forget the uh, barbecue for the Fallen Soldiers um, is on Sunday. Ron Artest will be out there. Uh, the um, We're going to have the Wendy Williams Comedy Experience out there. We're going to have Styles P out there. I'll be out there. You'll be out there. This is the second year we're doing this. And shout out to Question Mark Entertainment and MOR Entertainment. Face painting for the kids. Food and drink for the community. Yes, it's the it's the um, barbecue for the Fallen Soldiers Sunday at Nehemiah Park in Brownsville. So I'll see you guys there. I'll be out there with my little, my little you know, family squad. And my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law just got to town. My husband's from Brownsville. You know what I mean? So um, my mother-in-law is coming, you know, and we'll all be out there and having a good time. So we'll see you in Nehemiah Park on um, Sunday, everybody. Okay. All right, Ian, it's going to be a lot of fun, too. Um, today's Thursday. The Shadow Night Club is free. I just thought that I put that in your ear. The Shadow is free. It's Thursday. The Shadow has been free Thursday. You know, 
on on I think September 20th, I'll be celebrating like my fourth uh, year being here at WBLS. The Shadow Night Club has been free ever since I got back to New York. Ever since I got back to New York, ever since I started working at this radio station, The Shadow has been in business with the station for years, long before I got here. And, but it's been free every Thursday night. I can't figure out how one place can be so damn nice consistently to the you know community. Like, okay, I understand free every other month or every other Thursday or free to ladies before 10 p.m. or, you know, something... It's free to everybody all night long, every Thursday night. For almost four years I've been working here. It's free to everybody. How do you make a dollar? How do you keep the lights on? Go figure. It's not for me to figure out. It's just for me to pass it on. The Shadow Nightclub in Manhattan is free every single Thursday for everybody. It's a grown and sexy crowd. The Shadow Nightclub. Go there tonight. All right, um, Goose, let's continue uh, with... Um, what we're doing and and figure out some music to play and stuff and then some more is coming back in and we're going to gossip, gossip, gossip. Everybody, it's the Wendy Williams Experience. Vaughn's coming up at 7 o'clock on uh, your station, 107.5 WBLS. All right, now, we need some more in the studio. It's the Wendy Williams Experience. Here on the Wendy Williams Experience broadcasting show. <laughs> Here comes some more. All right, some more. Let's resume. And I am back. People. Yes. Back in black. Yes. Some more is telling jokes all weekend That's long. All weekend long. And where, where are you going to be? Where's your paper? I am in West Miak, New York. Nyack. Nyack. Mm-hmm. It's Nyack, New York. Mm hmm. At the, uh, what is the name Comedy. of the place? The Rascals at the Comedy. Mall mm-hmm. at, uh, Rascals, Rascals Comedy, Club. Comedy Club. 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock show tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow and 8 and 10 Saturday night. It's going to be off the chain. Get your tickets early because that's my first time ever being out in that area. I am excited. I am excited. It's a new club. I heard everything is brand new. Let's go buy some chicken wings in Hennessy, people. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. And by the Let's way, that's just over the Tappan Zee Bridge. It's right outside of New York City. It's really? Not... I've never been there, so I'm, I'm excited. All right. So, um, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, do you want to talk about them? tell you okay okay i don't believe in fighting over men but if i was uh what's the girl's name jennifer aniston she would have got beat down yeah but when i went to see mr and mrs smith she didn't stand a chance yeah that that love scene in there was heavy yeah it was very heavy and real apparently Uh, very very real so yeah she um i like angelina jolie though i seen her shopping one day in the gucci store yeah she looked very trashy though, like, like she had just gotten out of bed with somebody and didn't really wash. Uh huh. She had that little look. Uh huh. You know that little look, like, uh, well, let me go get a bag. You know what Tana Hoy just said about uh-huh. about Aunt Jennifer Aniston? She's got, um, according to him, she's got, he, she's got like issues herself. Well, she does. She doesn't speak to her mother. She didn't speak to her mother for years. <laughs> and they just made up. But you know what? That's an issue unto itself. And then itself. she used to be a fat girl. So, That's right. And then Brad Pitt wanted kids, so she was like, huh, huh. Not the way I keep my weight down, and now you want me to blow up? Yeah. Uh-uh. You know, so, you know, she, she wouldn't give him a baby. Yeah. Well, so that was the kind of thing. But I said his mother must not be cute. Because any kind of way you won't have a baby by somebody, mm-hmm. they must have the ugly thing running in their No, family. but he's good looking, and so yes, is his he brother. He might be. But you might not. She might have seen the other down the line, down the line. See, I Because I was in love with somebody once before, and I went to the family reunion. And, and so it was over. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, it was over. Oh, yeah, it was over. Everybody in the family had short arms. Oh. Like, nobody's arms came down to their waist. Oh. Okay? And everybody wore glasses. So I was like, oh, baby, this relationship is done. By the way, there's a people poll question on the website. <laughs> Are, I thought we got the results to this people poll question. Are you faithful to your spouse or partner? We... D- I don't have. I don't what have is the yes cheating, no. though. That's what I have an issue with. What is cheating? A professional flirting, cheating, and an in and out. That's physical cheating. That's feeding, physical cheating. But as but far as I'm mental, cons- is there mental cheating? Yep, there is, and I totally acknowledge it. You too. acknowledge che- so so website is cheating too, like emailing and all of that. That's cheating. What are you talking about? I'm saying like if, if you're on a page, like you're on like the web, and you're chatting with somebody. Okay, how about this too? blanket statement? Cheating is anything that you're doing with um, with somebody with flirtation involved. Well, you might as well go to jail then. That I you're, mean, that, and you know your partner wouldn't want you to be doing it. 
That's a lot, then. If you go out for dinner with somebody and there's no sex, but you're having close conversation Mm -hmm. and and a little touchy-touchy of, oh, oh, wow, okay. Okay. I don't believe this at all. Here's the result. What is the result? Are you faithful to your partner or spouse? 98% of people said yes. 27% of people said no. Oh, excuse me. 2% said no. Okay, let me ask people this. That's a lie. On a job. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say you work at a firm, at a, at a, you work in corporate America, and you know the doorman likes you. He gives you that little look mm, every day he sees you. Okay, so when you get there every morning, he has your little newspaper for you. He has a little USA Today, and he gives that to you every single morning, mm-hmm. and he gives you a cup of coffee. Okay. Because you entertain that. You take that coffee. You take that paper. Yes. <laughs> is that cheating? No. That's using what you got that to get what cheating. you want. That, that is no, cheating. I know. That's not cheating. Because you're leading him. Mm-hmm. On. Well, if the, if the bus man, if the bus driver right. looks at you every morning and says, mm, Miss Wendy, I like what you got on today. Come on, baby. You ain't got to pay. Just get on. And you entertain that. You skin and grin every day for the bus driver you and you what? get on. That's cheating. That's cheating. But I'm the type of woman to nip something like that, the, the paper from the doorman uh-huh. or the bus driver in the butt immediately in a very nice way. So you wouldn't take the free bus ride. You would insist I have to pay. But yes. You just have to pay. Just because I can't take a different bus because this is my route, but mm-hmm. I'm going to nip this in the bud so you understand. While I appreciate your attention, it's not necessary and it's unwanted. But thank you, Sam. Okay. I'll pay, you know, okay. from now on. Right. Because a lot of women don't know what she and I don't, is. And I really, I don't need a wardrobe check from you. I, right. And, I, and, and, you know, don't take that the wrong way. But, right. But you right. have a nice uh-huh. day. So when you go to, when you go to the little drugstore mm-hmm. and, and you see the little boy at the, at the counter and he wants to hook you up. And you, you go ahead and get the hook up. Yeah, once fine. Once Just fine. like I take the, the USA Today, the coffee and the bus ride once. Uh-huh. But I see a pattern like, oh, oh, you think this is going somewhere? <laughs> nip, 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 nip. Do you, nip, do you nip, nip, nip it in the butt or do you take advantage of it? Um, I would probably, I would probably take advantage of it, but... Somewhere down the line, I would let you know that I do have a man, and this is not going anywhere. Now, if but, you want to continue to give me the newspaper... See, just, now, do you feel like book. you have to lean on the fact that you have a, a boyfriend in order to tell a man no? Because, see, I don't say... I would not say to the doorman, I am married and happy. I would say... Uh, leave the man totally out of it because it's almost like you're hiding behind the man thing. Right. Listen, doorman, I wouldn't be interested in you if I was single. No, I wouldn't be that mean. I wouldn't oh, no, I wouldn't mean. tell him that. No, I wouldn't tell him that. But that's what I'm thinking in my mind. Like, like, come right. on, man. Right, right. I don't know. I would, I would, I would probably. Me, I would probably be really compassionate with him and kind of like just break it to him. Gently. Me too. You me know. too. Listen, I've be... dated down. Do you, have you dated down of in the course. past? Of course, of course. But now, if I was a single woman, but I don't go around with down. Uh, see, some you people go around with down. Well, I don't see, go around with down. I, in my twenties, I made the mistake of going around <laughs> with downs. <laughs> And I don't really consider it uh, such a mistake because I think that's part of the growth process. If I was oh, single right now, I would bone down. Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> but I wouldn't date down. Date, exactly. I wouldn't d- d- go around with down. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm not going around with down. Of course. Of course. I'd rather go around by myself. But your go- late nights would be down. Oh, down. Of course. Yes. Of course. <laughs> and pull the blinds. That. We know that. <laughs> and don't tell that. anybody. I'll deny it. We know that. Yes. You'd be like Mike Jones. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Well, gosh, you know, I wanted to get ba- uh, back into talking okay, about talk Hollywood. About, okay, jo- okay, Angelina Jolie. Do you like her? You like her? Um, you know what? I have a better understanding thanks to Tana Hoy. Damn him. Really? But I bought a Team Aniston top from Kitson on Robertson. Uh. But I know that she's crazy, and I'm yeah, tempted crazy. to put it on eBay. She's very insecure, I think. I'm she's with her on eBay. But Brad is fine. Brad is fine, and I'm really not into white boys. But Brad and the little, the little uh, baseball boy, who Derek Jeter? No, not baseball boy. What is the other boy from overseas? He made posh spice. Oh, Beckham! Scott. Oh, Beckham! Whoa. Oh, he's hot. Hey, we're getting the countdown. You gotta go. I gotta go. Some more at the Rascals oh, in Nyack, New York, you. tomorrow and Saturday. Tomorrow and Saturday. I've been with my uh, boyfriend for 14 years, but he's so lazy. It's driving me nuts. I can't. It's driving me crazy. I, I went away for the weekend. I left it in the sink. I came back two days. They were still there. You don't see the floor. Dust can pile up on the computer. He, just, he does absolutely nothing. He does nothing. The Wendy Williams Experience. Wow. Yo, did you catch this flashback? Well, 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 Wendy. 
I was at the Laugh Factory last night, and I must say, I was pleasantly surprised, Wendy. Wendy, I was the one who said hello to you when you were outside with your bodyguards. Walking around like I'm Diana Ross. Oh, but no, but see, you know what? You might wonder, like, Paul, that you're a platinum rapper and that your baby's mother had to call the show and that you, you know, you participate in homosexual activity and it's been addled. You know, I'm just giving an example. You're not going to see me up in the club and just step to me any way you want. That's why. I'll give you a lot of mouth and all like that, but um, in case you decide to jump up, you will get stepped to. This is it right here. Miss a day, miss a whole lot. Coming through your speakers, boy. It's windy, man. <laughs> 107.5 WBLS, home of today's R&B and classic soul. Luther Vandross, Stephanie Mills, Cam, Jill Scott, Babyface, Gladys Knight, Destiny's Child, Aretha Franklin. It's the best of today's R&B and classic soul. WBLS, New York. This is Chad L. Coleman, a.k.a. Cuddy from The Wire. How you doing? This is John Stark. How you doing? This is Jack A. Harry. How you doing? Yo, what up? This is Keenan Thompson. How you doing? And yo, check this out. This is Flavor Flav. And I want to know how you doing. The Wendy Williams Experience. Hi, I'm Mariah Carey. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Jaheim. Hey, y'all, this is Taryn Ramsey, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Edition today, you said? Oh. Oh, all right. I'm going to be on Inside Edition tonight. You remember I was telling you yesterday that I was on there talking about Bobby and Whitney? Apparently, it's on today's episode. I was just talking to some more. We were talked all through all the commercials and all through the songs and stuff like that. You know, every once in a while, I get somebody who comes through. It's not everybody. I would say like 30% of the people that come through this show, um, I genuinely. I could talk to them until forever, and our behind-the-scenes conversation is so nice, and, and, you know, so we were bonding on, you know, a few, again, because we always do, on a few different levels. We were talking about what it's like to be black and to be up for stuff in Hollywood, and, you know, neither one of us are five feet two, because, you know, most men in Hollywood are only five feet five. So to to do things a lot of times with other people, you know, you, you got to be shorter so everything balances, and then we don't fit into the body type of Hollywood. We're just big, black an alternative, you know, she's not Ellen DeGeneres, and I'm not Howard Stern. So, and that's what that's what Hollywood knows when they think of a comedian, or if they think black, they think Chris Rock, you know, they, or you know, they, and they think radio. Who they think of? Robin. I, I mean, I don't know who they think of, but it's just like weird, you know. And so she's got two big projects coming up. So I was wishing her well with those, and I was. You know, telling her a little bit about the, the meetings that I've had recently, and you know, anyway, um, <clears throat> I like her a lot. I've oh, I've lo- I've loved some uh, some more for years. And don't forget, um, everybody, she's going to be at Rascals in Nyack, New York, <clears throat> Friday and Saturday. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy! So it's just me and you, kiddos. What are we talking about? This man was charged finally. You know, they caught the guy. Here's more um, information on it. You know, Mark Cohn, he's the singer-songwriter. The, uh, he won a Grammy. He's a country guy. He was. He's married to Elizabeth Vargas, you know, from the news. So the man suspected of shooting her. Um, they actually caught him. Apparently, police said that the bullet, because, you know, um, Elizabeth Vargas' husband, Mark, he was shot in the head. Yes, he was shot in the head and he lived. The suspect in the shooting was caught. 
and charged with first-degree attempted murder and other accounts. He attempted to carjack Mark Cohn's car. Well, he was shot in the temple on August 7th when the man fired into the band's van in the parking lot. Mark was treated at the hospital and released. Police said at the time that the bullet appeared to have been slowed down, thank God, by the windshield. So he stood outside the windshield and fired in. Fortunately, the bullet was slowed by the windshield. And and Mark Vargas, I mean, Mark uh, Cohn lives and Elizabeth Vargas still has her husband. <clears throat> the tour manager, Thomas Doobie, was also grazed by the bullet. The guy who did the shooting <clears throat> and the alleged carjacking is 26. And his girlfriend was charged with uh, helping him out. She's 23. So that was some real Bonnie and Clyde mess. They held them up. Um, this is what happened. They ran from the scene, the girlfriend and the boyfriend, and they went to a vacant house. And the cops had a five and a half hour standoff with them. Finally, the cops had to blast tear gas through the windows. Everybody came out crying, the two of them. So he's in trouble. Wilmer Vladarama. I hate to admit that he's cute. I don't know. Guy. He, you know what? And he's cute. So he plays Fez on that 70s show, and I don't watch that show, but I can tell you this. He's about to um, host a trashy talk show or trash talking, like a, you know, an ish talking series on MTV called Young Mama. And uh, MTV is, is, is what it's all about for him. And this is what <clears throat> the president of entertainment, um, over at MTV says, Will Mirror is wired into our audience. His humor, his style, his approach, his personality make this great fit for MTV. So, he is one of many people who've signed on to be part of MTV's uh, series creators slash hosts. Ashton Kutcher is one of these. You know, he creates and hosts. Yeah. Puffy's one. Nick Cannon is one. And now Wilmer is one as well. <clears throat> Artist passing me a secret note saying his friend Ashton helped him get that deal. Oh, of course. Of, MTV. of course. Yeah. Of course, Ashton did. And I don't look at that as a how you doing thing. Were you trying to insinuate something? No, no, no I'm just saying oh. it was the nepotism sort of thing. Like, he's my boy. Mm -hmm. By the way, you know what I forgot to tell you all? Did you know that Will gave. Um, What's Will's boy's name? Dwayne Martin. All right, honey. All right. Gave him a Bentley. Wow. All right. It's good to be the queen. <laughs> I mean, king. <clears throat> so, Faith, she's married to Todd. Yes. I love them. Well, Todd takes no offense when... Um, Faith goes on stage and does her tribute to Biggie. Mm. And here's what um, she says about it. Well, she says, um, first of all, I'll do it in new style. Panache gave this to me. Faith Evans' husband, manager Todd Russell, takes no offense at the singer's overblown stage tribute to her late husband, Notorious Big. He knows that that they made financial sense for her that makes financial sense for her career and Evans admits that she would struggle to cope if Russell made constant declarations of love for a former girlfriend yeah isn't that the truth isn't that the truth <laughs> and here's what she says here's Faith's quote that's been a part of my show for eight years I don't know if I could handle it if the roles were reversed but the way Todd has dealt with it has deepened my respect for him. You also have to remember that Todd is my manager. He wants me to make the most of everything that happened with Big. And he changed it in, into a positive. Well, not only that, but it's not like Big was a boyfriend. He was a husband and now father to CJ. So, but it couldn't be me, though. Todd's a bigger man than I could be because I'd be like... Eh. What do you mean he had you mesma damn rised? Wow. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> Another damn tribute to the B.I.G. You could put that where? <laughs> yeah. 
No, I hear that, though. Yeah, Todd, you're a better man than me. How you doing? Not how you doing, Todd, but, you know, that's me as a man. Yeah. Give me the Woody. Oh. <laughs> and you're a better man than me, too, Todd. I couldn't deal with it. Let's talk about Missy Elliott. I love her. You can take me off. See you later, Woody. I'm out. I mean, I'm here. <laughs> so Missy um, says that she's very cautious about preaching to her young fans because she worries about um, scarring them, you know. And here's what her quote is. With kids, you have to draw back sometimes and not preach so much because you can scare them away. I realize that you have to reel them in a bit because it can almost be like you're a parent walking through the school dance with pamphlets or something. <laughs> with kids, you have to dance with them first. And by the end of the dance, you have to say, how about church on Sunday? Let me think about that for a minute. Dance with them first, then how about church on Sunday? I don't understand it, but I just like talking about Missy. That's my friend. <laughs> how you doing, girl? Hey. Somebody called up earlier and said that Missy um, sent Eva when she won America's Next Top Model. Four dozen roses. Makes me know, never mind. <clears throat> Eva looks good in the cover, cover girl commercials. You see her for the easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl? Mm -hmm. I had other stars, I mean, other things to talk to you about, too. Um, UPN. We got to get Flex Alexander in here, and I know that he's going to be coming in. I just, you know what? I was about to tell you a story that I told before, but I keep saving it because I'm waiting for Flex to come in. I want to talk about that show one-on-one -on -one and, and whatnot. Are they repeating Monique's fat chance at any given point? Because I never saw it, and I know that... I don't think it's a series. It was a one-time beauty pageant, right? Was it a one-time beauty pageant? Uh -huh. It was a one-time beauty pageant. Yeah. And what channel was it on? What? Oxygen. Oxygen? Yeah, yeah. Or We or something. Or We or something? It was on Oxygen? Are they going to... Re do they repeat a lot on Oxygen like they do on like VH1 and Bravo and stuff? Mm -hmm. So then maybe we'll get a chance to see it. I hear she had her baby shower recently. Or she's about to have it or something like that. Oh, Arthur, please. I'm sorry. She's happy, she's doing it, and she's got her fiancé soon How to be... You doing? Well, Ew. listen, oh. no accounting for people's choices. That is her longtime friend, and you relax. You're right, you're right, you're right. How you doing? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm. It is the buzz, though, you all. The heavy buzz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's like she's young to be thrown in the towel like that, right? Mm. <laughs> like, you know, like, like Liza Minnelli's like 56 or something or 60 or 80. How old is Liza Minnelli? On the other side of that, that if, if she wants to make a choice for companionship, that's one thing. You know what I mean? But to me, when a woman still has got a fighting chance in the game... Like, why throw in the towel? Why? 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 Star? Why? Mo? Why? Terry? Why? 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 You all are still in the game. That's all I'm saying. There's some other stuff that I wanted to talk to you all about, too. Why is my desk such a mess? It is a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. Faith and... Oh, I wanted to ask some more about um, um, Mary J. Blige on um, whether she read the article in Essence. I've yet to read it. I left my Essence in the studio by accident yesterday. Have any of you girls read the new Essence with Mary on the cover? No. I want to know what she, what she was saying. Anything good. When does Martha Stewart's show come? I want to see that. September. Next month, okay. It's filming around here. Is it? It's the, that's the queen of little arts interns right there. Oh. Yeah, that's the new queen of little interns. Mm -hmm. 
You know what? Um, I have the stats on, on plastic surgery and how things have changed over the years. Do you know that Botox injections are up 280%? Wow. From 2000. Between, from 2000 to 2004, <clears throat> this is the percentage change in what's what's happened. Botox is up 280%. Butt lifts. Go figure. I don't know anybody who's had one of those. Or or the or the um butt implants and stuff like that. I don't know anybody who's had one. I mean, I know people talk about it. I mean, there's there used to be a buzz about Tyra Banks having one. I don't know, but <laughs> butt lifts. Listen, girls, up 158 percent. So if you're considering it, you're like with the crowd. Tummy tucks are up 71 percent. Boob jobs are only up 24 percent, and facelifts are down 15 percent. So the big deal: butt lift and Botox. Keep it here. Wendy, man. She says, I know that Tyrone doesn't care about me. She says, he looks at me like I'm just a piece of and I look at him like he's just some The Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah, man, this is Rupi. Wow, wow. Yo, I your boy, be able to some. Can you hear me? Yo, yo, what's up? This is Kevin Little, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Today's R&B and classic song, 107.5 WBLS. All right, everybody, it's the Wendy Williams Experience. It's almost time to go home. But before we leave, I do want to thank my special guest during Advice Hour, Tana Hoy. Um, he is a psychic medium. He is really something incredible. You can go to his website at T-A-N-A. H-O-Y, Tanahoy.com. He's got um, his psychic medium cruise where you learn about your past life, the angels and all. If, you, if, if you're if you down with stuff like that, and many people are, I know many people, people listening carry crystals and believe in that kind of stuff, go to his website. He's like one of the best at what he does. Tanahoy.com. And, um, you know, maybe you can get one-on-one -on -one service from him or something like that, but find out more about Tana, and he will definitely be coming back. This is his second trip here. Also, thank you to some more telling jokes in Nyack, New York, um, at Rascals tonight or tomorrow and um, Saturday. Now, don't forget about our people poll question. The results of um, day before yesterday's, because I wasn't here the day before. Anyway, we got backed up a little bit. Are you are you being faithful to your partner or your spouse? Ninety eight percent of people said yes, and two percent of people said no. Find that difficult to believe, but okay. The new people poll question is: Have you ever had? Or do you have an STD? Simple yes or no. We can't see you. You can answer yes or no on the website. We'll give you the results tomorrow. The website is thewendywilliamsexperience.com. Bill Clinton's putting out a compilation CD, everyone. Oh, yes. It's called The Bill Clinton Collection. And... Um, it's going to be the first in a series of discs put out by him. Some of his favorite music includes uh, Coltrane, as David Sanborn, Miles Davis, <clears throat> and like that, Nina Simone, Judy Collins. And they say it's going to be, first of all, it's a joint venture for the Clinton Library and the Clinton Museum Store. And his office in New York has already reviewed the CD liner notes and um, apparently... It says that um, they say it's going to be available in stores um, at like at the end of September. They say five weeks. That would be like the end of September. Eminem is being sued by his aunt and uncle, Jack and Betty uh, Schmidt. They claim that they sold their Missouri home because Eminem wanted to maintain family ties. The lawsuit goes on to say that in maintaining those family ties, Eminem built them a home, moved them in, and promised to pay them $100,000 a year. The reason for the lawsuit is that apparently Eminem has refused to put their name on the title of the house. Well, I thought it was a gift. Not a gift in totality, but, it, you know. <laughs> I mean, I got a problem with this. Live there and shut up. If you want your name on a home, then reject my gift or hold on to your old house and live in the new luxurious house with my name on the title. I'm the wealthy one. I'm the one who needs the tax breaks. Maintain your house. 
Anyway, and they say that he's fallen short on his promise of paying them $100,000 a year. So they're looking for $25,000 in the lawsuit. I have no, I don't ask. And the rumors are circulating that the game is trying to sign Shine to his label. I'll keep my eye on that for you all. Oh, and Bill Murray um, is in negotiations to reprise his role as Garfield the Cat for Garfield 2, which is slated for release sometime next summer. I just thought you should know that. Oh, it's time for the Inside Scoop, sponsored by JCPenney. Okay, fall is right around the corner. JCPenney's got what you need, and they've got what you need at a fraction of the cost of the biggies. You know, style is not about what you pay for clothes. It's about how you put them together. Style is not about what you pay. It's how you put them together. J.C. Penney's got what you need, baby, for a fraction. I'm going to give you a list of 10 things that the fashionistas are saying that you need for fall if you follow fall. You know, if, if, you're, if your style changes according to what fashion is saying. They need, um, you need full skirts, military coats, black and white. Big combination. Again, black and white. They like the black and white combination the fashionistas do for the fall. Tall boots, capes, long cardigans, embellished bags skinny pants and jeans shiny fabrics and the little black dress which never goes out of style is back harder than ever those are the 10 things you need for fall that's what the runway is dictating if you if your fashion sense is dictated by the runway do not overlook jc penny because that same military coat that you buy this year from one of the biggies for four thousand dollars will be over next year you'll be glad you went to jc penny and as a little sidebar hint, how about if you get a military-inspired coat and you just go to the fabric store and change the buttons? That's just my little sidebar. JCPenney doesn't do buttons, but they do coats. They do tall boots. They do, they do jeans. They do all that. And that is the inside scoop. It's sponsored by JCPenney. Thank you, JCPenney. I love you. Ali Landry is engaged. There is life after Mario Lopez and that, and that two-week marriage that they had. She's engaged to another Latin lover named Alejandro. I can't even pronounce his last name. <laughs> but they recently got engaged in San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. They've been dating for 10 months. And she says, this is huge. I'm so happy. I'm looking forward to a spring wedding. Okay, Allie, take it easy. You took us through it with that relationship with Mario Lopez. You take it easy. And I'll do this in this just in fashion. Goose, this just in. From the Star Magazine. But don't sniff your nose. They've been in business for a long time. Damn, I only have one minute. I can forget it. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm sorry. <laughs> um... This is the part of the show where we get ready to go home. There's no point in getting involved in another story. Now I'm down to 45 seconds left, so I will remind you to watch Being Bobby Brown tonight, as I will be there, too. You know they have they have the tease shows before? Well, I'll be there. Oh, and by the way, check your local listings for what time Inside Edition comes on. I'm going to be on there tonight talking about Being Bobby Brown. I just filmed it yesterday. Don't judge me. Uh, oh, picture that. Don't judge. We judge all day here on the show. Look, don't look at my hair, makeup, and whatever. It is what it is, damn it. And I didn't know Inside Edition was coming in here until I was all the way through the Lincoln Tunnel. And then Nicole called up and said, Inside Edition wants to come up and talk to you about being Bobby Brown. So I keep a little stash of glowy lip gloss in my desk, but that's about it. I forgot what I was wearing yesterday, but chances are it wasn't much different than it is today. Jeans and some sort of top. Oh, as I know what I was wearing. I was wearing a tube top. Yeah, I was wearing a tube. No, well, the problem with tube tops, I was saying this yesterday. You know you're always yeah. pulling them up and then your nipples come off alignment and then it gets cold in the room and you've got one looking down in Mexico and one looking up at Canada. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you know, because you're, you pull with the tube yeah. top. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't able to check, so I don't know whether my headlights went on during the interview and if they did, if everything's all akimbo. I don't know why, you know, do you ever notice things like that about women? Not in a how you doing way, but just you want to tell a girl, girl, just pull up your right breast. Just just pull it up a little bit. Your headlights are looking crazy. Yep, and strapless bras do it too. 
Exactly. Well, see, that's why I'd rather not even wear a strapless bra. And thank goodness for the implants. You know, my boobs stay up. But sometimes, and they don't exactly look down south because of the implants, but sometimes they're akimbo. And then the tube top had, like, a little stripes going across that area. So now if, you, if both nips aren't sitting on the same stripe, then you really look crazy. So I don't know how it looks. But I just know that, you know, I'm not in it for the supermodel dumb. I'm in it to entertain you. And I'm on Inside Edition. Check your local listings. I know in New York it comes on at 2 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, when you take your 2 a.m. urination or whatever it is that you do at that time. Don't you wake up every night like 2 o'clock in the morning? I do. And that's usually when, and then I'll get back in the bed. I get something to drink, get back in the bed, and then I'll turn on the gangsta hour. And it'll be Spice TV or, you know. Oh, all right. All right. Goose says it's time to go. I love you for listening. We'll talk again tomorrow, hopefully. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks for the <laughs> See you later. Good night. Program complete. Listen, I'm going to finish what I was talking with you. I was about to do this just in. And it was regarding Oprah and Stedman. And so I'll talk to you about that during the bonus hour. Not now, Goose. Um, we're going to talk about when men go Martha. Girls, you know what that means. It's it's like a saying for, you know, when a man just does, you know, he's you come home, he's got on the damn apron, he's got the broom in his hand and stuff like that. Are you with that, when men go Martha? Some women are and some women aren't. There's an interesting article in Marie Claire I wanted to address. And then the drug dealer that won the lottery and can't keep the money. Because he's a drug dealer. And they apparently swooped down on him. And then there's a lady mad at me because of Isha yesterday. Remember Isha the intern and stuff? There's a lady who's mad at me. Like, who do you think you are? So, I, I mean, I don't mind talking about it. But I can tell you the outcome of my conversation with Isha was very, very good. And she's riding with the show. And I'm riding with her. All right. Any, every, anyway, everybody, um, keep it here. The best part of the show, which is the gangster, or excuse me, the bonus hour. I forgot. The gangster hour doesn't bode well with the, with the um, Madison Avenue, you know, with the advertisers. Sounds too gangster. Boss told me, please don't call it the gangster hour. You're scaring the advertisers. Like, okay. The bonus hour. But you know what it is. You know yes, it- Kings and... You know, you know what it is. <laughs> and the Gangsta Hour is coming up next on 107.5 WBLS. Yes, kings and queens, this is the original rude boy, David Levy, reminding you to join me each and every Saturday from 7 p.m. to 10 inside the ballroom. And then come Sunday, it's the number one Caribbean show in the world, Caribbean Fever, with this brand new time, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. Ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. It's windy, man. Here it is. Yeah. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS. New York. And hey, everybody. Welcome to the bonus hour. Hello. Hi, Wendy. I'm a little hoarse. Please bear with me. Okay. Listen, I have a question for you regarding little Sean. Okay. First of all, the song that he sung was um, Don Perignon. I don't know if you remember that one. It was right. Me. And Hickey's on uh, and Hickey's on my chest. You know, he's having a party um, at Club Rain in Brooklyn. Um, I believe that's supposed to be going on tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you know that he has a baby with Moni Love? The last kid that she had. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. You know what? I, yeah. do, I do believe I remember that. I think I was at uh, Shot 97. No, maybe I wasn't. How old No, was no, no. This was just, uh, the reason I know is because my man used to be locked up, and he was locked up, and she would visit. But I really want to know, and I want to do it in a gentle way. I want to put it out there. I want to know what happened with Moni. Do you know? I'm just... Yeah, Moni, like Moni is a disc jockey um, on my competition station in Philadelphia. Oh. Um, and, and she's hooked up with one of my former co-workers, a man that I happen to like very much. His name is Pooch. Okay. And together, they're making no noise at all because, of course, on my radio station in Philly, Power 99, there's a star in Buckwild in the morning and me in the afternoon. How oh. can you beat that? So what is it? They're at the same time slot as you guys? Uh, I said they're on in the morning. Oh, in the morning. Okay, in yeah, the morning. Yeah, oh. they do a morning show. Mm-hmm. All right. I just wondered what happened to her. Yeah. But yeah, I wasn't sure if you knew that. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. I, I, You know what? I hadn't thought about that in a while. But yes, I do recall that Moni does have um, a baby with little Sean. Yeah, yes. no one talks. Well, I want to thank you for calling. Okay. And have a good day. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Hello? Hello? Hi. 
How are you doing? Listen, Wendy, I just want the correct spelling for this guy, Tanahoy.com. Okay, T-A-N-A-H-O-Y. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, he was really good. Hello, hi, it's Hello. Wendy. Hello? Hi. Hi, is the trans the transvestite the... Um, we're not talking about that, uh, guessing names and stuff. We're on the radio. Oh, all uh, right. It is what it is. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hello. Mm. All right. Mm -mm. This lady's mad at me, and she didn't sign her name. Uh -oh. But she um, she was listening to the show yesterday with Isha, you know, the intern from Tufts, yes. who, um, as you know, you know, and I said on the radio, she's staying, and we talked, you know, in the office and stuff like that. We actually bonded. It was actually quite nice. And um, she's going to be staying in the show. But this lady is very upset. She says, Wendy Ann Williams Hunter. My middle name's not Ann, but I hear what you're saying. She's calling me my false. Wendy Ann Williams Hunter. Yeah, it's so deep. I have to spit out your government. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> what was on your dome yesterday? She goes on and on. She says, I'm highly upset with you. How dare you give that child a third degree on the air yesterday? Yada, 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 so on and so forth. I mean, I would have given it to her behind the scenes, except I just discovered on the air that she wasn't a full-time student. You know, I, I work a million different jobs, and I, might, I manage what I can, and I'm fortunate enough now where I actually have people that, that work for me for the show where I can delegate responsibility, and everybody is good at what they do. So, you know, I take queen of all interns very seriously. You know, it was Taryn at first and, you know, then it was um, Bianca. Now Bianca's leaving and it's Zoe. The queens of all interns, they help Arthur, who is in charge of the intern department of the show, um, among many things. We all wear different hats to, you know, bring in the right girls for the job. And... Um, I had not met this young lady yet. You know, often, because I come in, I'm like whizzing around, you know, hair all in my face. I'm, you know, running in, you know, recording the show. I'm, I'm, I'm recording, excuse me, um, commercials, you know, for my affiliate stations and so on and so forth. Yesterday, it was Inside Edition in between breaks and stuff. Sometimes I'll look up and be like, who's that? Oh, you a new intern? Oh, well, welcome to the show. And I'll literally be on the radio while I'm doing the welcoming. I'm not, sh you know, and... um. That's when I found out she wasn't in school, which, you know, they know I'm a stickler for that. But, um, you know, I am who I am, woman. And I hope that we're not fighting anymore because for for whatever you think that I was judging and everything like that. No, I wasn't judging. I just want to be sure that the internships offered on this show aren't taken for granted and given to the wrong people. And I thought that there was um, poor judgment on Art and Bianca's part until I found out more. And I said, you know what? We're going to keep her. There are exceptions to every role. You know what I mean? Well, I found out something else, too. And she's not in school, nor does she intend on going to graduate school. She's really trying to find herself at this point. And, and under normal circumstances, I don't have time for that here on the show. Finding yourself after school. You know, if you're trying to figure your way out while you're in school, but you happen to be a communications major, that's one thing. But I don't have time for finding yourself only because... I wasn't a find myself type person when it came to my career. Like, I was very, very focused. I knew what I wanted to do. And I, and I don't know how to... Oh, well, hell, it's my show. <laughs> and, you know, I want focused people. I feel as though I'll get the best out of people who are focused. One of the interns um, who, who just left a week ago, Jamie. Jamie is about to, um, she's very focused. She wants to be a radio disc jockey. She's, you know, absorbed all she can. And she's got my cell phone number. And she's off to become a DJ. Whether it's a small town like Cornfield, Nebraska, or wherever, she's off. She's off and running. You know, Taryn is now working at MTV behind the scenes. She loves the production. That's what she wants to do. You know, in a perfect world, all the Girl Fridays will go off and you'll, you'll all do fantastic things within this field of communication where then, you know, you're my intern Girl Fridays today. Tomorrow, you're going to be my peers. And we're going to be in professional organizations dealing with this. And we're going to be, you know... You'd be surprised how quickly, girls, all of a sudden we're like the same age. But right now we're not. You know, I understand I'm old Miss Wendy, you know, and you're the young girls. But, you know, give it a moment. You know, and we're going to be peer groups in this. And, you know, so it's like a, um, it's a little network that I didn't have when I was coming up. You know, and the, and the, the, the thing is, is that they say women are so catty and women don't help each other and all like that. You know, I want to be 
that to you girls. So I take the I take the internship seriously. And that's all. So and Isha is staying with the show and I'm going to help her out as well. Uh oh. Oh. I see what's going on. I just found that out. You did just find this out, Arthur? So I'm gonna have to swoop down, yes. I just found on that Bianca. Out. I, I, you, I can't do it on Taryn. It really not Bianca because she's about to leave. Yeah, exactly. You can't swoop down on anybody. They, got, they they pulled one over on you. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, well, we'll have to talk to Zoe. She's the new queen of all interns. Yes. Listen to what Arthur just passed me a note. Isha, the girl from Tufts from yesterday, is a friend of Bianca's, the former queen of all interns who's now leaving for law school. She's an entertainment lawyer, so it's still all in the same field. She's going to North Carolina, um, Chap- Hill. Chapel Hill. Yep. And Crystal is a friend of Taryn's, so I got to stop the hookups. Immediately stop. Yes. Immediately stop. Yes. How did Crystal and I get along? She's brand new. She's only been here for like two days. She was right here, too. She's the one with the glowy makeup? Right, and the hair pulled back. And the pulled back hair? Yeah, okay. Back, yeah. I like her. She yeah. stays. But no more friends hookups. See, I don't like hookups. Yeah. People who get hooked up, you know, you know, you apply for an internship, you go through the smoke over, and then you get the job. This is not the hookup place. Yeah. This, nah, this is not the hookup place. Well, what you need to do is have a meeting with Zoe and let her know if there's any hooking up that, that you find out about or don't let me find out about it. Yeah. It's over for everybody. We'll just do a clean sweep and start over. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. We need to do a clean, clean sweep? Because yeah, I don't know who the heck is friends with who now. That makes, makes you wonder. I know. It makes me wonder. You see, wonder what you know there's a million around. Exactly. Who are you all hooked up with? Yeah. What are you all's names again? You're brand new. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Stephanie. Stephanie? And Jahan. <laughs> oh, that's right. They're, these girls are brand new, too. It's only like you guys' third day here, but it, the, the days are separated. So Somebody's cousin. Hey, yeah, who's cousin? Who do you all know, Stephanie? I don't know anybody. Johan? No. Nobody. Why are you looking down? Body language all crazy. <laughs> Who are you? One of the Sutton's uh, grandchildren or something? Well, that's an exception right there. <laughs> no, because that's a spy in the room. Ooh. Are you got to be kidding me? Yeah, you're right. Hal Jackson, I love you, but don't try to, um, you know, because you know Hal. Hal's a big willy up in here. Yeah. But do you want Hal Jackson's, you know, granddaughter as an intern on the show? Hell no. And she goes back and tells, granddaddy, Miss Wendy's a mess. Oh, yeah. Granddaddy, Miss Artie, he's a mess. Yeah. Granddaddy, you know Miss Wendy takes equals. Uh oh. Once a week, every Wednesday at two thirty, she sends me into the kitchen and takes equals because she says she doesn't want to pay from their hundred dollars. Excuse me, there's there, um, a hundred equals or seven dollars at the food town is what she says, and somehow she feels as though the radio station owes her something on the DL, wow. and she has no use for paper clips at her house, but she damn sure has use for equals. <laughs> Grand, Granddad, did you know that? You know, uh uh-uh. uh, no, we gotta start finding out these. Can I see? I don't know. I do not like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People who hook up don't work as hard. No. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. <laughs> a very good girlfriend of mine <clears throat> asked me if her daughter could intern on this show. Now, I've known my girlfriend's girls for a few years. Yeah. Nice, respectful girls. This is a college girl. Major happens to be communications. Homegirl came to the internship every time she came, which was only about three times before we had to let her go because she wouldn't. She was unreliable. She wouldn't show up, and she wouldn't call Miss Artie or email him or tell. She just wouldn't show up. And when she was here, she stayed on her sidekick, and she yeah. stayed with her sunglasses on, real dark ones, like all cool, like you know what I'm saying. And unlike Stephanie and Johan and the, you other girls, see Johan, you're already into finalizing or whatever that crap is you're doing over there with the machine <laughs> recording the show for best of. No, I see what you're doing. But the point is, is that you, you understand what I'm saying? She wasn't doing anything, and it broke my heart. And, and, and hopefully it didn't strain the, the relationship with me and my girlfriend. But her daughter was bumming on my time. Yeah, she was worthless. Like, I understand this sounds fun and everything like that, but it's not. And she was worthless to the show. And that's a cancer that would spread to the working girls. Why, well, Miss Wendy, you know, letting it go. That, well, we can relax, too. You understand what I'm saying? Literally, she spent the whole time. She'd sit on her perch over there talking on that thing. What is that electric thing that she was using? Yeah, yeah, sidekick, yeah. 
What is she emailing people and or talking, yeah. talking and yeah, just chatting away. And remember with the sunglasses on yeah. and the lackadaisical work ethic. Mm-hmm. And she'd show up when she wanted to, and then she'd be late on the days that she showed up. And never call. And and never call. And that's the problem with hookups. That's the problem. So Isha and that other girl would be closely watched. Yes, Isha, you're staying, but I'm watching you. And what's the other girl's name? Uh, Crystal. Crystal, I'm watching you too. And damn you, Taryn. You too, Bianca. And damn you, Bianca. I love you girls, though, but damn you. I'm choking you through the radio. And don't even think about it, Zoe. (laughs) Zoe's now the new queen of all interns. Let's move on. But don't be mad um, because um, Isha's staying. Isha got a hookup. Yeah. (laughs) Because Isha went to Tufts and Bianca went to Boston College. They knew each other from Boston. Girl, I'll hook you up with the show. She could have at least called her in and lied about her major or something. At least. Yeah, make up a story. At least. (laughs) I'm thinking Bianca's feelings yesterday were sincere when she was on pins and needles. Is Miss Wendy going to let her go right here? I'm thinking she was sincere, like getting caught up in the drama of, you know, being the queen of all interns. Instead, that's her friend. Yeah. Yeah. Getting caught up in the drama of, you mean we can't commute anymore? And yeah. No, Isha stay. <clears throat> I'm just very passionate about it. And I'm trying to develop something here. I'm trying to develop a girl network. Yeah. You know, she's getting her sea legs on. When she gets it, gets it going on, you know, I need uh, two attorneys on the case. Now, I'll call in Ray Hamlin, but I need backup, Bianca. Yeah. Attorney Bianca, you know, at that point. Yeah. Help me negotiate this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got an overnight, we got a position available at the radio station. Jamie, send me a tape. Let me hear you say how you sound. Yeah. Trevor, Trev Hollywood, who's the production guy. He was my intern. Yeah. Back when I was working at the lipstick station. I mean, Scal was my main one, but Trev Hollywood, unbeknownst to you all, was in the cut. He was right there. He was right there. And now, you know, all these years later, he's working on the show. He's my head of production. He puts together all the best stuff. So he loves what he does. Art was my intern. Yes. See, so my girls, you know, if if you do well... The Lord will bless you. Or at the very least, you can come along for the ride. There you go. It is what you make it. <clears throat> Art was so glad. You mean you're taking me out of Philly? Well, yes, if you want to accept the opportunity. Let me pack my bags, honey. <laughs> <laughs> New York, big city of dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Let me leave these country Negroes and chest the hill out of here. I'm out. <laughs> I need something exciting in my life. Philly's too boring. <laughs> How you doing, Scott? <laughs> Scott! <laughs> I already did it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <clears throat> When men go Martha. Do you know what that is or do I need to explain that? It's like a saying, not Martha Stewart, but you know, when a guy goes Martha. Birthing the babies practically, emptying the dishwasher, picking out a new china pattern, you know, comparing drape swatches. But hetero, there's nothing gay. There's a guy who did an article for Marie Claire magazine. His name is Peter Hyman. And. <laughs> And he, he says he's perfectly straight. He says, my mother had a lot to do with the nurturing tendencies that I have. Among, me, among my childhood um, affections, she says, he says, excuse me, I used to walk around the house rearranging the furniture and offering my opinions on, um, you know, elements that she could use to incorporate in the decor. He says, to this day, I can't visit my parents without making some sort of decorative assessment. Again, I'm straight, he says. He says, unfortunately, the women that I date tend to be far less forgiving. Isn't that something like like we want 
you know, that help and stuff. We want somebody to be a little bit more sensitive in helping around the house or whatever. At least pick up your funky socks. And then when they do it too much, say they pick up the socks and yours too and do three loads of laundry and fold the socks neatly and put them in his drawer and your drawer. Now, that's too much. Even I can admit, like, I don't want all that help. You do? Oh, wait, no, wait a minute. Johan's talking to a working woman. I thought you were a student as well. No, I go to school. Oh, okay. Easy. John, trying to trip her up, trip her I up. Do a lot. Yeah, you do a lot. Do you have, do you have kids? No. <clears throat> Some women love that, you know, and then there are other women who, who don't love that. He's talking about one of his girlfriends. Uh, he says, Alicia was a lovely marketing executive who lived in an apartment that she had just purchased. The space was airy and open, but didn't quite feel like home. She was in the process of decorating when we met. Among the first tasks was a complete renovation of the bathroom, which still featured the original pink for Micah um, and the Nixon era fixtures. I offered to help. This involved a lot of weekend drudgery through kitchen and bath stores. Sweetie, I think the medium-sized moss green tiles offer more symmetrical look. Oh, gosh. Than the multicolor sections um, you're drawn to, I said helpfully. Your choice was too busy. Well, thank you, Mr. Martha Stewart, she said. It's kind of you to be so concerned with my symmetry. I'm just trying to be helpful, he said. You said you trusted my eye. I do trust your eye. I just hope that you and your eye were not planning on having sex in the next month. I'm going to be busy like the tiles. Blah, blah, blah. He goes on to say, he's like a Martha Stewart man living in a a world of women that we want help. But I want this to be the poll question, maybe day after tomorrow. Okay, what you got? First of all, is the phrase men going Martha, do women get that? I, I understood it immediately. It doesn't mean gay. It doesn't mean going to watching Martha Stewart. It means more helpful around the house, more involved with the selection of pillows, china, cooking dinner, mm-hmm. changing the kids and all like that. When men go Martha, does that turn you on? And that could be a yes or no question. Or, you know, does that turn you off? I will say Yes. I will say yes. I appreciate the help around the house, but don't expect any sex in the next month. You and your china patterns and whatnot. So how do you want it written? Um, When when men go Martha, is it appealing or is it attractive? When men go Martha, Mm -hmm. well, how about this? Are you turned off by Martha men? And that's not the question that's on there right now. The question that's on the website right now is... Yeah, thank you. Um, I oh, have do you or have you ever had an STD? Yes. Right. Yeah, yes or no questions. They're always yes or no questions. You can go to the website, the Wendy Williams Experience.com. I'm turned off to Martha Men. It's not a gay thing as much as it is a Does that include washing his plate after he eats? Yes, no look, let's not go crazy. Yeah. Why don't you rinse it off and put it in the dishwasher? Or if it is that we don't have no dishwasher, yeah, no, no, no. There's nothing wrong with you washing your plate. It's when I walk in the kitchen and you're washing the walls. You know, you've got all the Campbell soups removed from the cabinet. You're laying liner paper. See, Joanna, you like all that. Um, That's a little bit extreme. I want someone to help, but I don't want someone to take over. Right. Yeah. We don't know what we want, we women. We're a mess. Yeah, you're not doing it. What might not get done? No, that's when you work hard enough, man. Stop being so damn Martha and work hard enough and hire me somebody to come in here and help me. Wow. 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 Or if you can't do that, then, you know, maybe we can do it together. Like, don't be so Martha. Why don't you take the garbage out? You know, hammer in that floorboard. Why don't you fix the leaky pipe? You know, 
And yeah, you know what? You can bring the clothes down, but I'll wash them and, and fold them. And then, you know what? You bring them back upstairs. I don't know. I don't know. You know, everybody conducts their household differently. Personally speaking, I don't have time to do anything, so I'm really not one to talk at this particular point. I've become such a different person than I used to be in terms of, um, <clears throat> you know, pri- but I've learned to prioritize, you know what I mean? Like, it's more important that I spend quality family time than it is, you know, that I, you know, do, you know, and then you fill in the blank. You know, but I work, I work hard. I'll call somebody to do. Mm-hmm. But at least I have that quality time. You know, it's tough. Although on my day off the other day, I told you, I painted a wall in the bathroom. I got a fixture changed in the bathroom, you know. And so the fixture was not as big as the old fixture that was there, which means that now the wall had to be painted because now the the, the new fixture is smaller. Mm -hmm. So shout out to AKKJ Electric, the Wedlock family in Plainfield. Those are my electricians. They're great people. You know, um, a father and his sons, and um, a great group of workers. And they don't come in, you know, asking for shout-outs and rap CDs and all that other kind of stuff. They're so nice. Such nice people. Nice black family, you know. I like to keep it that way. You know, when possible. <clears throat> when would that be impossible? When people get too familiar? Yeah, sometimes we tend to get too familiar with each other and, and then, it, you know, crossing boundaries, but mm-mm, not AKKJ. So they came to the house on my day off. You know, I'm waiting for my kids to get back from Martha's Vineyard and they changed the fixture. And then the fixture wasn't as big as the wall. So here I go pulling out my touch-up paint thinking that I can touch up. And my sister had arrived with my son. My sister said, no, you can see the touch-up. You're going to have to have the whole wall painted. Right then and there, I just started putting the line-up tape on and there I am with the roller. Is that a turn-off when women go butch? Is that, you know, because if, if a man going Martha's going to turn us off, then, then me painting a wall with the roller paint and the tray, is that a turn off? If you do it in Daisy Dukes and a, and a, and a bra? Oh, not then. Okay, see, exactly. Yes. And then after I did that, I made a full dinner. There you go. You made up for it. You balanced it. Yeah. <laughs> you have your tomboy moments about you, but that's very sexy when a woman can balance it out. Yeah, I do. I'm mean with the hammer and drill and all that other kind of stuff. I mean, I call in the pros when I, it's too much for me. But I love doing stuff like that. Yeah. So why isn't that butch? That's not butch. It's still a part of the household. We don't know what we want. <laughs> it is sad. <laughs> it is sad. Did you hear about this child star? Um, who stand in trial for murder. He and his wife are like the Bonnie and Clyde. No, this is totally different than Elizabeth Vargas' husband. Do you watch, um, do you remember Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Or excuse me, the Power Rangers? All right, well, there's a, there was a Power Ranger in real life. His name is Skylar Dion, uh, Deleon. I, I don't know who that is. I was never into the Power Rangers like that. But anyway, um, all right, we can talk about that when we get back from the break because we got to get ready to take a break. Then the drug dealer... In Texas, who won the lottery, they wouldn't let him keep the money. There's something real nice going on to celebrate um, moms in Chicago. A bunch of celebrities are involved with it. And, you know, it's still summer. And a lot of, a lot of evildoers spend a lot of time plotting to attack innocent women during the summer. So I have some tips, ladies, on how we can stay safe and what to do. If we're attacked, just three quick tips on staying safe and three on if we're attacked. And they're coming from um, a woman who who runs a school. Her name is Joanne. The other page is missing. I can't. I don't have to. Anyway, but it's coming from a pro. But right now, caller number 10 on the phones is going to pick up the passes for, remember I was telling you, NJ Pack, Steve Harvey, some more? Okay, and so caller number 10 is going to win right now. So dial carefully and good luck because it's Pepsi Thursday here at WBLS, and we're still celebrating our 107 days of summer. And by the way, there are block parties all over town in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. You can join us this Sunday, August 21st. There's the Washington Avenue Street Festival. The event's going to include a live broadcast 
um, with David Levy, his show Caribbean Flavor Basketball Tournament, live reggae and soca and stuff. And that's going on in Crown Heights, Brooklyn on Sunday. It's the WVLS Heineken Block Party, which is fabulous. Okay. Now, we're busy here. We are so busy. We're planning our Circle of Sisters. That's not until October, but they're busy in the back planning that now, October 1st and 2nd. Find out more about it. Go to our website, WBLS.com. It, I, I'll give you a heads up, though. This is a celebration of um, today's woman of color. And, um, you know, the, the once again, the date for Circle of Sisters is October 1st and 2nd. Go to our website. It's a wealth of information on there at WBLS.com. And right now, like I said, call the number 10. And 11. Right, right, right. Apparently, there was a little snafu last hour. We didn't give them away, or one of these hours. What was I wrapped up with Tanahoy or something? Yes, I was uh, in the other. Some more. In some more, some more, and I were having such conversation. I, I genuinely, I genuinely, I love her. You know, I mean, we have a conversation on the radio, but then it's a whole other kind of conversation behind the scenes. We've got a lot in common, and it's very funny because me, some more, and Kathy Griffin. When I watch that Kathy Griffin show, The D-List, I look at that and I'm like, why is she telling my story? And then guess who else we have in common? Randy over on uh, Air America. You know, Randy, you know, she's in the kitchen while I'm taking my equals the other day. And I mentioned to her about The D-List. What's Randy's last name again? Randy Rhodes. Don't you dare change that channel. She's still on right now. I beat her in the ratings. Yeah. But um, anyway, Randy loves the D-list, too. She was like, that is so my story. I was like, mine, too. And some more was like, and mine, too. We, so we love Kathy Griffin. She's doing the work of so many. She doesn't even understand. Or maybe she does. Maybe that's why she's doing it. I don't know. The D-list with Kathy Griffin, it's on Bravo. It's my second favorite to being Bobby Brown. All right, so call now to win. We'll come back and, you know, we'll round out the show. It's the Wendy Williams Experience, and, and, and we're on 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and Classic Soul. Yo, what's good? This is Kwame, and you're checking out the bonus hour. You know, we're giving you a bonus hour because it's so fire up here. Wendy's on fire, so she she hooking y'all up with a bonus hour. So you're checking the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. <laughs> He's got a strange voice, Kwame, doesn't he? Yeah, Kwame. The boy genius. Yeah, that's the boy genius, all right. The rhythm. <laughs> a former child star and his wife were ordered to stand trial on Tuesday for the murder of a wealthy California couple. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, this is what they did. The wealthy California couple had a boat for sale. So the child star and his wife... <clears throat> well, he played off the child star thing, you know. My name is Skylar DeLeon. No, he's not as famous as Macaulay Culkin. I don't know who he is, but he's 26, and apparently he was once a star with the Power Rangers. He said he, they went to see the boat. He and his 24-year-old wife went to see this, you know, yacht. They get schmoozy with the couple, the wealthy couple, and say, why don't you take us out? You know, take us out. Let's, let's see how she rides, you know. Sure, come on. And they take him out. Well, honey, when they get out there to the high seas, old Skyler and his wife Jennifer tied an anchor around the couple, threw them overboard, killed them. And now they're standing trial for murder after a two-day preliminary hearing. What? Yeah. The police were baffled for months as they searched for the missing couple. <laughs> Well, apparently, members of the Crips, wait, hold on, hold on, give me the typewriter. Okay. Orange County Superior Court Judge John Connolly ordered 26-year-old Skylar DeLeon, who once was a Power Ranger in the TV series, and his wife, 24-year-old Jennifer Henderson DeLeon, to stand trial for the murders after two days of preliminary hearing in Santa Ana, south of Los Angeles. Also bound over for trial in the case, which baffled police for months as they searched for the missing couple, were a member of the Crips Street Gang and a prison guard who were also accused of helping carry out the conspiracy to steal the 55-foot luxury yacht. Wow. So it, when they were out there at the high seas, then a prison guard and a Crip showed up and helped them, you know, do it. 
They also had the couple sign over the title to the boat before they killed him. It's haunting to think these nice, lovely people were trying to hold their breaths as they sank to the bottom of the ocean. So they were alive and they died by drowning, tied to the anchor of their own boat. How terrible is that? Prosecutors say that Skylar de Leon came up with the plot after spotting the yacht for sale in a boating magazine last November, meeting the owners, Thomas Hawkins, 57, and his wife, Jackie, 47. He's accused of enlisting the help of 40-year-old gang member John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Wow. (laughs) And ex-jailer Alonzo Machane, 21, to carry out the murder in November of 2004. They confessed to the police separately, and that's how the plot unraveled. Police detectives testified during the hearing that Delion and his then pregnant wife. How are you going to be pregnant and killing? Ain't no good going to come to you. Mm -mm -mm. And his wife poses interested buyers. Miles off the coast of Newport Beach, California, prosecutors say Thomas and Jackie Hawkins. This is the couple with the with the yacht were attacked with a stun gun. Handcuffed gagged and duct taped after they signed over power of attorney to one of the assailants they were tied to the boat's 66 pound anchor and thrown overboard the couple was reported missing by relatives blah 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 good they're done then there's this guy a convicted drug killer uh, excuse me dealer um, rolled snake eyes yesterday when an appeals court ruled that he can't keep his lottery winnings because he bought the ticket with drug proceeds. What? And now how much is a lottery ticket? $3? Yeah, yeah. What? He's trying to get you. Well, maybe he didn't have a job. Like, you know, if you, if you sell drugs and maybe, you know, hold down a little job at the Macy's or something like that, then they could say, well, $3, you got that from Macy's, your, your paycheck. Of course he was black. I mean, Let me see his name. Uh uh-uh. uh. Jose Bentoncourt. Oh. Bum 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 bum. Jose Luis Bentoncourt. Well, listen. Listen, because you, nobody asked you how much money it was. Jose Luis Bentoncourt was convicted in May of 2003 of conspiracy and two counts of possession with intent to distribute cocaine. Oh. Apparently, he never got out of the game. The jury had ruled then that Bentoncourt, a Mexican citizen, should forfeit half of his interest in the lottery jackpot, about $5.5 million, because his ticket was purchased with ill-gotten gain. On Wednesday, yesterday, a a three-judge panel said federal law allows the government to seize all properties and proceeds obtained from drug trafficking. Well, they do. That's part of what's going on with Murder, Inc. That seed money. You know, it's not the Ja Rule money, money that was gained legitimately. It's that seed money. Where'd you get the money to start this? Where'd you get the money to press up your first joint? And then that's when they look to Griff. You know what I'm saying? And Griff, oh, it's just nasty. His mom could have given that dollar. That's what I was thinking. I was like, how do you know that came from his You know what? That's what I'm like. Yeah, it is crazy. And I'm not... They were watching him for a while, probably. Yeah, swoop down on his millions. Uh Uh-uh, I'm not going anywhere. Oh. I'm staying right here. What a diva. Here's Joanne's tips for staying safe. This is the um, this is the um, self-defense lady. She says number one, um, keep distractions like talking on your cell phone, window shopping, and and all that old, you know, sauntering with your head a mile up in the skies to a minimum. You know, we all do that. Don't you walk and talk on your cell phone? You're so busy window shopping. You're not even watching that your bag is just dangling from two fingers as opposed to a full-blown vice grip. Oh, yeah. They say also, get rid of the girly stuff in your car. Leaving lipsticks and hairbrushes lying around your vehicle lets a would-be attacker know that the car belongs to a woman. So right. So right. Oh, you keep all that yeah, stuff in I your... Do. No, see, I don't keep any of that kind of stuff. Because I'm thinking like this. Like, you know, uh uh-uh. 
you're not going to know this is a woman's car. So then when you're trying to plot outside the mall, which car you're going to stand by, you stand by my car. My weekly's on the... Uh-uh. <laughs> and number three, she says, this is how to keep yourself safe. Trust your gut. All too often, women ignore their most important weapon, their intuition. If you feel like you're in jeopardy, leave, run into a store, ask for help, call 911. Just trust your intuition. Now... If none of this works and you are attacked, here are three things and then I'm going home. Mm-hmm. Always fight back. No attacker wants a difficult target. The kicking and screaming and the punching, odds are he'll simply run away. I mean, if you give him a hard time, yeah. they say. Here's another one, ladies. Elbow him in the jaw, nose, temple, stomach, or groin. Oh. These targets will throw him off balance, giving you a chance to escape. Also, if he can't see you, he can't get you. Use your thumb and poke him in the eye. Jab him as hard as you can. And number three, grab his clothes. Get up close and then kick him in the groin. So in other words, come here and then ooh, knee him in the groin. Can I add one more? What? If you take your two fingers and just jab him in his Adam's apple too. That, that'll do him in too. Just right in Adam's apple real quick. What if you just punch him in the Adam's apple? <laughs> well, it's just too much air. You want to get that, just get the, get the apple real good. But I guess if you punch him, yeah, I guess you can do that too. You know? You want to really push it in, doing some damage, just push it in. Why can't you just pull out your gun and shoot him? Oh! <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? If you got one, yeah, sure. Get a gun license. There you go. Walmart. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm saying. Get you a gun license, license to travel, and brandish it. And then he brandishes his. No. And there you got a whole big other mess. It's a terrible world. Pray, how about that? If you pray, then maybe none of that stuff will happen. Or maybe it will, but you'll live. Or talk to Tana Hoy and see if it will happen. Yeah, talk to Tana Hoy. TanaHoy.com. T-A-N-A-H-O-Y.com. Some more. The weekend, she's going to be um, at Rascals in Nyack. And then she's going to be in New Jersey at NJ Pack on September 10th. Thanks for coming through. All right, you all. I'm going home. Um to get my positioning all ready for being Bobby Brown tonight. (laughs) We've got this episode and then one more and then it's all over. I don't want it to come back. What more can it tell? Tana said that it's not coming back. Guess what Tana also said? Tana's never even seen the show. Uh Tana said that he doesn't see in his, you you know, he's a psychic medium. He said he doesn't see Whitney getting off drugs, and they do enable each other. He also said that he doesn't see Whitney making any sort of career comeback that'll matter for anything. Um, And also that he doesn't see this Bobby Brown project doing much either. But he also said that he sees a world, a lifetime of, of, of mess for Bobby Chris, and that they're, you know, they are what we see on the show. See, he's never seen the show. But they are what we see on the show, like toxic for each other. Like they love, but it's a sick kind of situation. Please come to the soul while I'm buying the bar out between 10 and 12. Are you? Yes. My birthday. Then why isn't somebody buying the bar out for you? Huh? You're buying the bar out? Well, I mean, somebody's buying in my behalf. I'm not buying. Somebody's buying it for my... Tonight at the Soul Bowl? Yes. Between what time? Uh, 10 and 12. Where is that? In Hillside? No, no, it's in Union. Route 22 West. Will you all still be there after being Bobby Brown? <laughs> well, they have TVs over the bar. Uh-uh, no, nah, I'm not watching my show in a gang-like setting <laughs> where people are talking and bowling and the pins and, you know, no sound. the DJ. Yeah, uh-uh, no, 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 no. So, like I said, after I watch being Bobby Brown, are you all still there? Yes, I'm there till 2. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is very black. <laughs> wow, Negroes bowling all damn night. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, everybody. I'm going to make a break for it. Vaughn Harper's up next with The Quiet Star. I love you for listening today. Thank you so much for being here. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.